said it early. Chiefs broadcast in the kingdom. Chiefs kingdom ACU crew, how's it going? How's it going on a Friday night for you? Um, once again, trying to get comfy, trying to relax a little bit. Finally, finally get to take a break and boom, the Chiefs go and trade Legereus Sneed. To the Tennessee Titans, um, this was definitely somebody that we knew was in talks with the Chiefs for Legereus Sneed. All the smoke was the Colts and the Titans, uh, and it looks like it was the Colts. So, or I'm sorry, the Titans and not the Colts. So, is what it is. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. It looks like uh, so breaking. The Chiefs are sending cornerback Legereus Sneed to the Tennessee Titans. Sources tell Adam Schefter. The Kansas City Chiefs are expected to receive a 2025 third-round pick in addition to a 2024 seventh-round pick swap while Snead will sign a new contract. Man, I hate, I hate, hate having to do the uh, I told you so game, but good Lord, there's so many people out there that really thought that the Chiefs were going to get a, a first-round pick or two first-round picks for LeJarrius Snead. And time and time again, we tried to explain why that was not going to happen. And no one listened. They just all, everyone knows everything and, and everyone thought you were crazy when you said it. But uh, with the money that they have to, to give to Sneed and all the needs that they have to fill, um, we knew that they weren't going to get a first round pick. Uh, the market just wasn't there for it. Sneed wanted way too much money. He probably hung this up longer than it needed to be because Snead wants too much money. Um, but yeah, a third round pick. So it's actually even lower than we thought. We thought they might be able to get a second round pick. But I do know the Titans, I don't think they have a second round pick this year. I could be wrong. Uh, but the third round pick and a, and a seventh round pick swap, is that what it was? That's that's insane. So just goes to show you they tagged them to trade them. They had no intentions of paying Legereus Snead $20 million. So. It is what it is. Um, it does suck to see Snead go, especially after a ridiculous season like last season. Best corner in football. But with him being on the contract year, we, we knew what was happening. We knew it was coming. Um, people can be mad, um, but it is what it is. It's a good move for the Chiefs uh, for a couple of reasons. One, Legereus Snead wanted way too much damn money. Two, we didn't want to pay twenty million dollars for a corner. Three, we're deep at safe or uh, deep at corner. We have plenty of corners. Um, we we develop corners well. Uh, this could mean they they might look at corner in the draft, but they don't even have to. They they don't have to. That's how many they have uh, that are that are good. Uh, so, but what this does is open up the door for the Chiefs to go ahead and finish signing guys and, and making the moves they need to make this off season. Uh, and there's still some. Uh, Still some other other things they need to work on. Obviously, they got to figure out the left tackle situation, offensive line depth. Um, the running back room is still a little thin at the moment. Uh, there are some things that the Chiefs can be looking at. Of course, are they done at wide receiver? We don't know. Could be. Maybe not. If they're planning on drafting them, probably not signing anybody else. If they go sign someone random like OBJ or or someone where all the, you know, all the rumors are at, then then maybe they're not looking to draft them. I, there's this could go a lot of different ways, but but this opens up the door for the Chiefs to actually do what they need to do. Uh, they had to, they had to offload Snead. There's no way they were going to pay him 20 million a year, and uh, it, I'm, I'm glad it's done. Uh, and uh, you know, like I said, it's it's kind of a bittersweet thing because we love Jerry Snead and he was awesome. We wanted him with the Chiefs. Uh, you even had Travis Kelsey, you know begging and pleading with him just just stay just stay still stay keep what you're doing um but they they needed the roster or the uh, cap space uh the roster spot 
is fine. I mean, as far as corners go, we're in a good position with corners. So glad, glad it got done. Glad it got done. Um, the compensation, we'll talk more about that here in just a minute, but um, either way, this is a positive step for the Chiefs. This is something that had to happen. So far, um, Brett Veach has checked every box. Every box we said he needed to check. He had to re-sign Chris Jones. You needed to get Tranquil back. Um, you, you needed to sign a receiver. Uh, Hollywood Brown was at the top of our list. Uh, check mark. And then we said that you have to trade Sneed for some draft compensation. And check mark. So uh, looks like Brett Veach is doing all the right things right now. Um, and and it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So there's still a lot that can be done right before the draft. And then the draft's going to be exciting as well. So get your popcorn ready, Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, team's going to look a little bit different next year, uh, but hopefully in a good way. So uh, I we've always been under the impression the defense is still going to be really good next year without Legarius Sneed. The person they could not lose was Chris Jones. And I think Brett Veach and his crew and Andy Reid and everybody agreed with that. That's why they went ahead and signed Chris Jones long term. Um, so I think, you know, now now we open up space to to keep building this offense up because they were definitely a pain in the ass to watch a lot a lot of times last year. So it'll be nice to see this offense open up a little bit. Patrick Mahomes to have more options out there and, and things like that. But appreciate you guys jumping on here with me. Um, I know it's late on a Friday night. I think I saw where someone in the chat said Brett Beach works third shift. I think that's a thing now. He gets to work first thing at uh, 11 p.m. and decides to start trading people or whatever he's doing. Uh, but no, I think this one's been in the works for a minute. Uh, we all saw the smoke, and usually where there's smoke, there's fire. So I think that we knew that Snead was on his way out. It was just a matter of time. It was how how are they going to talk him into not wanting twenty three million dollars a year or something stupid for a, for a corner? So I think that was the the hang up. Like who could actually pay him what he wants or at least close to it? And end up being the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are making moves, man. They got got the new coach. They got the the whole new regime over there. So they're going a little bit different direction now, and uh, they're they're making moves. So a uh, good team to to you know, to target Legereus need on both ends. So I think it'll be a, a good thing. It'll be a good thing. Uh, let me know what you think in the chat about the trade though. I don't like the compensation. That's, that's the part that people's really going to be freaking out about. So I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. Uh, as far as Mike and I, we both knew that you weren't getting a first round pick for Legereus Sneed. We thought you might be able to get a second rounder. Um, but we knew that if, if you could get a second rounder, you jump on it, right? Like we knew if, like, if you got that offer, you take it. And of course, 99% of Chiefs Kingdom out there screaming and hollering like, Hey man, with Jerry Sneed, we have to have at least a first round pick, uh, which is insane to think. But um, in reality, in the real world, we got what he was uh, worth right now, which is a third round pick and um, a, a pick swap. Uh, I knew it was going to be something like that. I thought it might be a little bit more than that, but that just shows you where the market was for Legarius Sneed. I mean, corner corner market's not, you know, popping, and, and Legarius Sneed wanted too much money. So uh, it was a couple of different things there. Enrique in the house with the five bomb. What's up, Enrique? He says, no sensibility, just sense, Chiefs Kingdom. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a common sense move. I mean, you tagged them to trade them. You didn't tag him to pay a corner $20 million this coming season, especially with uh, the roster slots you still had open to things that you need to improve on. I think corner was the least of our worries uh, as far as that goes. So it was only smart. It only made sense to do. Appreciate the five, Enrique. Y'all throw some legendaries in the chat for Enrique. Uh, but once again, thanks for joining me tonight. I know it was just kind of um, out of the blue. Uh, but hit that like button for me. Also, if you're new to the channel, uh, we do Kansas City Chiefs content. Normally, my brother Mike's here with me, but he's just getting back from work. So hopefully he can jump on here in just a minute and I can get his thoughts on this entire thing, which I kind of know where he's at with it probably. Uh, but hit that subscribe button. Hang out with us more often. Also, if you're not a member, uh, hit that join button. Become a member of the ACU crew. It starts at $4.99. And we do members only live streams and different things like that. So, so definitely, definitely do that if you haven't. Um, but yeah, I'm just interested to see what you guys think about it in the chat. I know a lot of people is going to be upset with that compensation. 
because people just had their hopes way too high, way, way too high. Um, it, David House is a third next year. I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, it could be. I can't remember off the top of my head if, if, if it was a second round pick or a third round pick the Titans didn't have this year. If it's the third round pick, then it very well could be next year, uh, which is kind of funny because uh, people were really adamant that we had to get a first round pick, if not more, for Sneed, which, you know, it's just ridiculous, but is what it is. Looks like we got a uh, five bomb from our boy Jeremiah. He says we have a surplus in defensive block, uh, backs. And we have more picks and money, 100%. I think the the corner room is good. I mean, Trent McDuffie is shut down. Like, he's that guy. So we have him. I think Joshua Williams is the guy that you guys really need to keep an eye on. I think he's the next corner that we develop into a Legereus Need type player or HR Various Ward type player. I think he fits that mold. He's tall. He's long. He's fast. I, I think that... The Joshua Williams is one you really need to keep your eye on. Then, of course, we still got Jalen Watson, who is right there with him. Um, we do have Nazi Johnson coming back off an of injury. Uh, we have the guy that we drafted last year, Nick Jones. He, he didn't get to play because of injury, so we didn't see much of him. Uh, there's lots of guys there. Chamari Corner and is, you know, is a safety, but, of course, he can play cornerback. I know a lot of people thought – Maybe last year when we drafted him, that that was Sneed's replacement or their idea of a replacement for Sneed. So there's lots of different routes they can go here, and I think we're completely fine as far as defensive backs go. I'm right there with you, Jeremiah. Appreciate the five, my man. Pops in the house. Pops has been a member for five whole months. Look at that. He says, thanks, LJ. Good luck in the future. Uh, that's the sentiment here. Uh, appreciate you, Legarius Sneed, what you did for the Kansas City Chiefs. Glad you were able to come get two rings and go get paid by somebody, man. You earned the money. Uh, what a freaking year he had. Like, absolutely shut down this last season. So he earned every dime he's getting. And uh, w we knew it just wasn't going to be the Chiefs that were going to be able to pay him what he was worth. So, you know, you obviously it being his first big contract outside of his rookie contract, he's going to have to take the money that he can get. So I definitely think uh, – this, this is good for both sides. Brent says a top uh, top three corner for $19.8 million was a deal. Not really. Um, don't think so. I just don't think the Chiefs are in the business to pay a corner $20 million in one year. Like, like it, they don't want a corner taking up $20 million of cap space. Just does It's not feasible for the Chiefs in the way this team operates. It makes no sense. They literally draft heavy. Uh, and, you know, in the secondary for the last few years, they've been ready to, to for this move to take place. They've been anticipating this uh, and they've been putting the pieces in place. And I think they've done it well. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Brent also says Beach sucks and Andy just makes him look good. I think that's a hot take. Probably not a good one. Brett Beach has done pretty, pretty good as a GM of the Chiefs, I would say. Um, over his tenure here. Say less says beloved player for us since day one. This is the best we got. Uh, beloved player. Uh, we developed him. I mean, Sneed was, I can't remember Sneed fourth round pick. Maybe I can't remember for sure. Uh, but we developed him. No one knew that Sneed was going to be what he is now. Um, the chiefs do really well at developing corners. We've seen that in the past. I mean, right before Sneed, you had Tarverius Ward who went and got paid by the 49ers. Uh, you knew this was going to be kind of the same deal. Um, but, but I mean, how awesome is it that you're able to grab these guys mid to late draft, develop them into, to what they are and, and then cash in on that. Uh, you know, repeat, <laughs> just do the same thing again. That, that, that seems to be their MO on defensive backs. Um, Jeremiah Goad says a sneak fumble in Baltimore will live in Chiefs lore forever, 100%. I mean, what a freaking play, man. That's that's a legendary play there. Um, uh, Darnell says, Will the C the cornerbacks be better without Legarius Sneed? Who will take his place? Uh, saying the cornerbacks will be better without Legarius Sneed is a stretch. I don't think they will necessarily be better. As far as who will take its place, I think the guy that you're going to see get used 
as far as if they use someone to shadow the wide receiver ones, probably be McDuffie more than likely. But I think Joshua Williams is going to slide in and do a lot of the things that Legereus Sneed does. He, he kind of has that style play about him. Prince Tiger Beat says, this ain't good, it's trash. Um, I mean, any anyone, and I'm not trying to, to say anyone's, I, I don't know how to go about saying this, but if you really thought that the Chiefs were going to pay Legereus Sneed, you have not been listening for two years, on this channel at least, um, if you thought you were going to get a first round pick for him, you, you, you were expecting too much. I mean, this is exactly what we expected to happen. Like a hundred percent. This is right on cue. Like we knew that Legarius Sneed was going somewhere else when his contract was up. The chiefs are not going to pay a corner. They have not done, done it in years. And, and I don't see them doing it in the future. So, this is just what the Chiefs are, man. This is how they roll. So, get used to it. Get used to it. Pop says ACU crew, the best crew on the net. 100% old man. We got all the good people over here. Um, Jeremiah says, and Beach, I trust. Uh, Beach is making good moves, man. So, uh, that's the thing. Like, a lot of people think we don't like Brett Beach because we discuss moves he makes or, or we bring up scenarios and say maybe he should do this. And it's, it's not that, that's just us having conversation about it. But when all is said and done, like when you push all that to the side, we can speculate or say what we think would be cool or or whatever, and we'll talk about it. Or we might even critique some of the things Brett Beach does, either A, playing devil's advocate, or B, we, we really don't agree with it 100%. But we do trust Brett Beach. We trust Andy Reid. So at the end of the day, if this is the direction they wanted to go in, I think they've done more than enough in their tenure with the Chiefs and have proven themselves for us to be like, okay, there's no reason for us to throw a fit about this or whatever, you know. Like, obviously, they have a plan in place, and this is what they wanted to do. It wasn't like the Chiefs absolutely had to do this. I mean, if they really wanted to try to keep Snead, I guess they could have. Uh, they could have let him play on the tag. They could have tried to work out an extension. Uh, there were ways to make it happen. I just don't think it was in the cards. I don't think that, that it was ever in the plan. So it is what it is. So that third round pick, that third round picks for next year, is that right? Y'all let me know in the chat because uh, obviously I just saw the news and jumped on here. I don't think that they had a third round pick this year, but let me see. Y'all let me know. A lot of people's going to be mad about that too, so... If that compensation is next season, they're really gonna their heads are gonna explode collectively. I'm sure they're uh, freaking out about that. Uh, Kenneth Caldwell says, "I knew Chiefs wouldn't pay Snead and didn't expect a first, but should have gotten a second at least, a seventh round swap and a third." Um, well, I agree. I, I I think that you would hope they could have got more than what they did, but I'm not shocked in the in the least. Like, not even a little bit. Like, I was kind of hoping they would be able to score a second-round pick for Snead, but I wasn't expecting it. Like like I said, I just don't think the market was there. I don't think that we were planning on play, paying LeJarrius Snead. I think we had to do what we had to do to get any sort of draft compensation. I mean, the whole point was to tag him, trade him, get something in return instead of letting him walk and get paid by somebody else for nothing. So, I mean, you can – be upset and think that Legarius needs worth more than a third round pick. And you're probably right about that. But the fact of the matter is it's better to get something in return than absolutely nothing. So I still think it was a, a boss move by Brett Beach. I think it was something that needed to be done. Pretty much expected it when they tagged them. Like the minute they tagged them, I knew it was a tag and trade. Um, it, it only made sense. We got Adam in the house with the two bomb. He says Becton or Smith. Um, I see a lot of people talk about Makai Becton. So uh, I'm assuming you're talking about Donovan Smith. Uh, I don't know what they're planning on doing at left tackle. Uh, there's some options there. A lot of people are under the impression that they're going to rely on Juan J. Morris. They think he's ready to go. I've, I'm not necessarily there in that crowd. I think having like a proven, some kind of guy with experience might be good. Uh, Becton obviously hasn't lived up to, you know, his billing, but, I think, I think they're 
is something with Makai Becton. I think that he's has the ability to do it. He's not reached that yet. Can he come to Kansas City and Andy Heck get him up to where he needs to be? It's a possibility. I don't know. They might kick the tires on that one. Uh, Donovan Smith, in my opinion, I feel like you're not really gaining anything by signing Donovan Smith back because I feel like Wanye can do just about as good of a job as, as Smith. So I think there's some options there. They might look in the draft. They might try to trade up in the first round, which I highly doubt, but there is that. If they want a really good top tier left tackle out of the first round, you're going to have to trade up. Uh, so I don't see that one happening. Me and Mike actually put out our uh, Chiefs draft predictions version 1.0 today. So it's the very first one we've done for this draft season. Um, we posted it in the community. We also got have it on X. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we actually took a tackle in the first round uh, in our first uh, predictions for the Chiefs draft. So we'll talk about that here in a minute too. I might wait until Mike gets here and we can go over those with you while we're on talking about this. So why not? As far as the Sneed trade goes, I, like I said, I don't think it's made, like obviously it's major news, but I don't think it surprises anybody that had any sort of uh, grasp on how things work. Um, <laughs> I think everyone should have known it was a tag and trade and they should have known that we were not getting a first round pick for LeJarrius Sneed, especially when someone has to turn around and pay him $20 million a year or something close to that. Um, also this all is pending, uh, a physical for Snead. I think he'll pass the physical, but he does have that lingering knee issue. So there's that that's still in play, I suppose. And I'm sure they want to check that out as well. Make sure they're not getting damaged goods. Uh, so there's still a little bit up in the air here. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it looks like the overall consensus is that we got fleeced on the trade. It's, it, it literally, it's a perspective you're looking at it from. Like if you think that you're literally just trading Legarius Sneed and how good Legarius Sneed is, just the player and his ability, yes, he's worth more than a third round pick from next season. He is. But when you're not just trading Legarius Sneed, you're also trading away $20 million a year salary cap hit that you don't want for a position that you're solid at for a position that you're deep at. So if you have all these, like if anyone watched the Chiefs last season, you know that the offense struggled heavily. Like they need to get that going. They've got to get that in place. The defense is not going to take much of a step back. Like, yes, they're going to, it's, it's a small step back uh, in the cornerback room. But like I said, it's small. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not the extent of like losing Chris Jones would have been. Uh, but we got we got to beef up the offense. We got to get this thing rolling because, I mean, our defense is solid. But that that's what you have to look at it as. You have to look at it through that that lens. Like it's not you're not trading just Legarius Sneed and he's worth a second round pick, so we should get a second round pick. You're also offloading twenty million dollars salary cap hit. I mean, it just is what it is. Like it's something that you had to do. So do you let him walk and just go take a different contract? for nothing or do you tag them? Do you trade them? Do you get something in return and the same outcome? It's just common sense to me. I think, I think if anyone took off their uh, chief's colored glasses for a second and just looked at the big picture from the outside in, they could have seen this coming from a mile away. Um, so not a, not a big surprise. Rob Smith says OBJ, OBJ coming now. I, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I just, I just don't know about OBJ. Like, could we use them for a year? Absolutely. I don't see why we couldn't, but do we need him? No. Uh, also, is he an injury risk? Yes. Uh, could he help? Um, yeah, absolutely. If, if he was healthy, OBJ could help. He's got talent, uh, and we need experienced wide receivers. So, I'm not like a hundred percent against it, but it would have to be a very, very, very team friendly deal. And I, and then again, like I said, there's so many good guys in the draft in the wide receiver room and we're, we have limited spots that we're going to have on this 53 man roster. We're looking at probably six this year. There's no way they're going seven again. So, I mean, how much can you load it up and still draft and, and try to, I, I don't know if there's even room for it to be quite honest about it. Uh, Chris Wright in the house. What's up, Chris? Uh, he says, Ben on HBTC and KCSN, nobody likes this compensation. Um, 
Yeah, I appreciate you being a member for eight months, Chris Wright. You're a legend. Um, do I like the comp compensation? I wish we would have got more, but this is not a surprise to me. I don't hate it because it was expected. Like if it was out of left field and I was like, oh crap, man, we just traded LeJarius Sneed for a seventh round pick swap. Okay, yeah, I'd probably be a little bummed out about this. The way I'm looking at it though is we were not going to be able to pay LeJarius Sneed. He was gone anyway. And instead of just not getting anything in return, we're going to get a third round pick and a pick swap for it. And he's still gone. Somebody else has got to pay that bill. Uh, that's where I'm at with it. So I will go out on a limb and I'll be the first channel on YouTube where I'm going to say solid move, Brett Veach. I'm okay with the compensation because you're doing what you had to do. No one was out there uh, breaking their neck to pay Legereus need 20 plus million dollars a year or else we would have got more. So think about that for a second. Um, Jeremiah with the four month membership, he says no fleecing. It's Sneed's fault. He wanted too much. 100% Jeremiah. So that's something me and Mike had discussed earlier today when we were working on some stuff. Uh, we were doing our, we were working on our top 100 uh, draft prospects. We did our first chiefs um, predictions for the draft, our first chiefs mock predictions. And, you know, we actually had that conversation. It was like, how come no one is pissed off at Legereus need the way they were mad at Chris Jones last season, different situations, but we got less draft compensation in return for Sneed because Sneed was asking for too much money. So last season, it was, you know, the end of the world because Chris Jones was asking for 30 million, which he ended up getting because he was worth it. Uh, so it was the end of the world. Chris Jones was a terrible human being. He wasn't a team player. But no one cared that Sneed was out there asking for way, way too much money for a corner and holding up all these trade talks and getting us less draft compensation. So it's just weird, you know, how, how that works. Like the way people look at things sometimes it's I, obviously it's different than, than the lens I'm looking through right now, but it was a, it was a, it was worth talking about me and Mike were talking about earlier, Jeremiah. So I'm kind of with you on this one, Adam with the five bomb. He says, I did like your draft 1.0. My brain says offensive tackle in the first, but my heart wants Brian Thomas jr. Um, so Mike loves Brian Thomas Jr. as well. The problem with Brian Thomas Jr. is I think he's going to go fairly early. Uh, I think he's a very good pick as well. I think we actually, we did a full first round mock, which we're going to send to our boy Broshmo uh, for his channel. He might review, he might mock the mock. He will review our mock draft. Uh, so if he does that, we'll definitely send you guys the link so you can see our entire first round. But in the first round of, our Chiefs predictions, we actually had them taking a tackle in first round. Uh, like I said, we'll go over that in just a little bit, and maybe we can all talk about that some when Mike gets home. He can jump on here, and we'll go over that with you after we get his uh, thoughts on Sneed. Appreciate the five, Adam. Uh, P. Swizzle in the house. He says, uh, who do you want the Chiefs to draft with this trade? Uh, appreciate the two, P. Swizzle. Uh, so this would be a third round pick for next season, I believe. So not real sure yet. Um, I have to get back to you on that because this is going to be something that we're going to be looking at until next year. Could could they use the draft compensation to trade up in this year's draft? Absolutely. So you could see uh, immediate compensation in a different form. Uh, but yeah, if, if we actually hold on to that third round pick for next year, we'll get back with you, Peace Whistle, on that answer. It uh, looks like we got a 10 bomb from our boy Gil in the house. What is up, Gil? He said, what's up, crew? Gil, hope you're doing well, man. I still got to get my banner from Mike. Mike's still hoarding my banner from me. And speaking of the hoarder, he's in the house, so he can he can jump on in here whenever he's ready to. Uh, but appreciate the 10. Y'all put some legendaries in the chat for Adam, P. Swizzle, and Gil. And then our boy Chris Wright and Jeremiah, who's been members for a while. And uh, uh, Enrique. Enrique also had... A super chat. Y'all put some legendaries in the chat. Here's Mikey. There's Mike. What's up, my man? Mm, not much. I, I get a random call. What is the deal with Brett Veach only doing crap in the middle of the night? He's third shifter. We already talked about it. This guy, he he's driving me batty. Right, Mike. He, so He's driving me crazy. 
to save you, I don't know if you've been listening or not, but just to, to save no. you from save you some breath, I already did the whole. I hate to say I told you so. I hate we hate to be those people, but the fact that we keep telling people this is what's going to happen or should happen more than likely, like we're obviously we're not like 100% right all the time, but we're not telling you something's more than likely for the fun of it. Like, so like Steve. all the people, all the people that we had to fight with and say that we weren't getting a first Look. round pick for Sneed. Either way, not, we don't need to hear it. I've already done it. I already did it. Okay. So what I want to get to is the draft compensation for Legere Sneed is a third round pick from next year for the Titans and a seventh round pick swap. All this is contingent on uh, Sneed's physical with the Titans. Of course he has a knee problem. Probably won't be an issue, but either way, it's still contingent on that. Um, Chris Wright jumped in here. He said uh, KCSN, HBTC. He went through all the other channels. They're live right now. And he said all of them are really upset with the draft compensation. Wait, th they're all live too? Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the they're upset with the draft compensation. Of course everybody's upset with the draft compensation. Right. Well, Who's here, not? Okay, well, here was my, here was my uh, point, Mike. I can't be upset with the draft compensation because we knew we saw this coming. Like if you're prepared for it and you know, what's going to happen. I, we knew the minute they tagged Snead, it was a tag and trade. Mike, we've been telling people for two years, we're not going to sign Snead long-term. We do not pay corners. So we saw this coming from a mile away. We've also had the conversation that we, we might be able to get a second round pick. We might be able to get a second round pick, but if we do, we better jump on it. We ended up getting a third round from next year. So everybody's Steve, upset, but I don't think they should be. What do you think? I don't know. Look, did the Chiefs get fleeced? Yeah, they did. But did they? But that, that's only if you're looking at it from a perspective of, hey, I like Madden football. All right. <laughs> hey, I don't understand how the NFL works. I get it. Like, yeah, is Snead valuable? He's a very valuable piece. He really is. Um, but That's why you tag him and trade him for compensation. Right. So you're letting him walk for free, right? But the fact is, if, if you understand how it works, it wasn't that surprising. Remember when I was throwing up those everyday trades just to see what was going on? And I was giving us like awesome second round picks and multiple pick swaps. And everybody was just saying, no, no, no. And I just kept being like, man, you guys are going to be really surprised when the real actual compensation comes out. And look, here we are. Everybody's right, surprised right. about it, huh? Right, man. Mike, you could you could probably go on a three-day mission on Twitter and just laugh at people. Or Gary. Look at Gary. He says, you got what you wished for, for an empty bag of chips. Sorry, fans. Okay, Gary, so many things wrong with this. A, <laughs> I could honestly care less what you say. Yeah, no one like, cares what Gary says. I don't hey, know what is I think wrong with you. Utilize the, uh, utilize the new emoji I put out, to the pit. If y'all want to see Gary, it go to the matter. pit. It doesn't Not about Gary pit. to the pit. Nobody <laughs> wished for pit. this. Just telling the truth isn't a wish. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my God, I'm going to have to pay my house payment at the end of the month. And then when I get the bill, I'm like, oh, I wish for this. No, it's just called knowing what's coming. A. Okay. And then sorry fans you are. Whatever we're sorry think, fans. Gary. We're sorry fans because we, we knew what Look, to expect. I'm going to tell you this though. <laughs> Wild, isn't it? We are fans. But when it to comes to this podcast, I choose to be a knowledgeable football person, a knowledgeable football mind before a Chiefs fan, and that's what you guys can't get. But that's why before you like a, a lot of the other channels. I get it. They'll call yeah, you, easier. they'll hold your hand, and they'll tell you they're, how great. They're easier to, to yeah, digest, I get it. Right? So, look, if you don't like it, Gary, hola. But I will Wait, tell you this. Hola. Sayonara. Sayonara. One of those uh, Spanish adios. words. Is Sayonara? I don't think Sayonara is Spanish. And you know what? We didn't even get a um, literal bag of chips. We would have made bank if we had got a bag of Funyuns or something. Doritos are two for eight bucks right now. We would have made bank off that trade. We got, a, we got a freaking half-eaten banana pill over here, okay? Look, Veach really did get fleeced, but at the same time, he had no choice. And it's really not getting fleeced because he had to get rid of the contract. That's what I can't get. That's what I can't wrap my head around. I don't know why, why people are not understanding that we weren't we weren't paying Snead long term. It wasn't happening. So what do you do? Do you let him walk well, this off season? Look, Hold on. Well, I, or do I you tag him and get say, compensation? Right. I already know people's like, well, twenty million dollars for a corner is not that bad. 
It is. A, Legereus Sneed, I don't know if he's necessarily a top one to two corner in this league. He's not really done it consistently over time. For last season, he was. But it's not been a consistent thing. Uh, if you go back just two years ago, he led the team in missed tackles. He led the team in penalties. He was leading. He gets more hand penalties than anybody. He gets. Uh, he w- he allowed more catches. Uh, there was a lot of things he did bad for a few years. He's fixed it, and last year he put it all together. Congrats, Snead, not Hayton. But I don't know if he's literally like a top two shutdown corner in all of football. And by the way. Twenty million a year might not be that bad, but you don't want twenty million on the year completely, one hundred percent to the cap. Like you could have twenty million with five million to the cap. That makes sense, but right. you don't want all twenty million to the well, cap. That's insane. So a couple of things, Mike. To to your point, you said earlier, like we try to be real about things. Like we, we don't just come on here. Like we love Legarius Sneed, but we've been real about it. Like he's not going to be a chief long term. We knew that. So we, we would tell people that even though it was unpopular. But I'll tell you this. If you're really upset about the trade compensation for Legere Sneed, it's because you bought into all the other people telling you right. this and that. Like, like just because they made you feel good about Legere Sneed and made them happy and they got the little like button clicks and things like that. But they set you up for this. Like this happens all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's like we've it's had several ex- look, I've come to the conclusion that I'm just going to stop talking knowledgeable football because that's not what people just, want, Steve. Just get on there and read tweets. Like tell them what's happening just by reading tweets. Right. And that's what they like. They don't want an opinion. Just they don't regurgitate want... <laughs> what just regurgitate what they told me to say and they'll like you. That's what people We live in an informational age where people reject facts and information at an alarming rate. Like, we may be the first uh, generation in the history that has all information at the edges of our fingertips, and we just, we actively push it away because it hurts our feelings or it don't align to what we want. So, I mean, it is what it is. I don't care. I'm not even going to say I told you so. It doesn't matter. It It doesn't doesn't matter. matter. All that'll do is cause people to be like, oh, look at these arrogant assholes. So, uh, it doesn't matter. Well, well, that's the thing. You'll either pay attention or you won't, and I don't care. Right. Well, we we don't have to dwell on that, right? But the thing that I do want to talk about is, is everyone's so upset about the compensation, but we literally weren't going to get anything for Snead. Like we right. weren't going to pay we him. We could have just not tagged him and he could have just right. walked. We weren't going to pay him. We can't afford to pay a corner that much money. It's just not the way we do things. Um, so we knew that way he was walking. We knew somebody else was going to end up paying Snead. So why is it a bad move for Brett Veach to tag him and trade him and get draft compensation instead of letting him walk for nothing? I, that's a smart move. That's just a common sense move by a good GM, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Brett Beach made the move he has to make. Right. This is why when people were like, we're going to let him play under the tag, and you kept seeing people come back. By the way, Pretty Ricky took an L. He said the deal was done with the coach. <laughs> um, he well, was I wrong. Think, well, that's why he was banned. He could have been right, and just right. the fact that Sneed, Sneed was asking up. for way too much money, man. They, yeah, Sneed was, I mean, Sneed was a big part here trying to get, but he knows he don't have, this is probably his biggest contract he's going to get. He's got to make the money. I mean, you can't be mad at Sneed. I get it. I'm not mad at anybody. Like, But we knew this had to happen. The Chiefs are built deep at corner, okay? You're deeper at corner than you, look, if Chris Jones walks, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about a bag of chips, you could have put a bag of chips out there at defensive tackle, and we'd have probably been just as good off if we wouldn't have had Chris Jones come back. But at least with Sneed, I mean, come on. You've got Trent McDuffie, the warden on one side. You're going to have Josh Williams, Jalen Watson, whoever wins that job. Nazi Johnson's coming back off his injury. Nick Jones was a nice pick last year that was making strides in camp, uh, and then he got injured, but he's going to be back healthy. That was just a wrist or something. You've also got freaking Shamari Connor, who on this channel, we said when he was picked, this is the Legereus Sneed replacement. Could, could be. I it, think they'll keep him in safety but wait, now, though. What, what did that mean? Legereus Sneed replacement. He's going to be here forever. No, he's not. They were building for this. No player. Look, Chris Jones is one of those guys that well, you had to, to lock up, right? Another but, thing to remember, Mike, Legereus Sneed started as a safety as well. Right. I mean, it's gonna. there's plenty of people in the draft, too. I mean, come on. Right. It, Sneed's good. Sneed's great, even. But it, it's not like he's an un, 
replaceable generational talent here, people. Like, let's ch- chill out just a tad bit with that one. <laughs> uh, Jordan Francis with a 10 bomb. He says, don't worry, Chiefs Kingdom. We're going to be fine Oh, baby. Season. We are a dynasty, so let's celebrate. Let's be happy. Chiefs are back-to-back champs. I'm always happy. Respect. Go Chiefs. Jordan, appreciate you being here. Appreciate the great words, you know? Like, we know that this is going to be sour grapes. Like, every... Look, all we hear about, if I ever say... Oh, the Chiefs should have traded something better for McCole Hardman in the season last year. Brett Veach really <laughs> dropped the ball on wide receivers. Trust, All we heard was, you Veach. don't trust Veach. Trust yeah. Veach. And then now that he gets draft compensation for Snead, now Veach is an idiot magically. <laughs> so it's only if it go along the lines of what you want, which is the world in a nutshell. So look, everybody just chill out. Yeah, it's like okay. For once, let Veach... Let him cook a little bit. He's just been cleaning the kitchen. Apparently, he don't get started cooking till midnight. But once he gets going, he's having a little Waffle House. He's having a little uh, what stays open twenty four hours. Having a little, a little White pie. Castle, a little he's bitty a little burger, cheese with a little bit of meat and a, a little, little bit of onion, a little a bit little of pickle, bit of onion and a pickle. Come on, <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Jordan Francis, I like the name Jordan Francis. You know what? That name even sounds respectful. That name sounds like you should be a freaking president. Jordan Francis the third. Thanks for the 10 bomb, my boy. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Yeah, Mike. So I was telling them we did our first mock draft, our first Chiefs predictions 1.0, which now it could maybe change. I don't know, but it's obviously this will be a an ongoing, like a, an evolution all the way up until the draft. Right before the draft, probably a, a day or two, maybe even three before yeah. the draft, we'll put out our final predictions. I want to uh, do one a, every week. Right. So this is the Until first the version, the first version of that. So it'll, it's, it's going to be changing and evolving. Uh, but I'm going to try to upload some of these pictures real quick, Mike, if you want to go ahead and get the chat and stuff, I'm going to upload some pictures and we're going to go over that with people uh, while we're on tonight. Cause why not? Well, yeah. Well, while you're doing that, I want to ask you a question. Go for it. The chiefs were sitting somewhere with Sneed accounting against the cap. The chiefs were already sitting at about 7 million to 8 million, somewhere in that range. Now you free up about twenty. Why is Brett Veach getting twenty seven? Are, are they gear? Are they loading up for something? If so, well, what would it be? Because you're not going after another huge name wide receiver. I just don't see that happening at this point. Um, right. You wouldn't have to load up so much, right? You wouldn't have to gear up a bunch of money. I, I know just trading Sneed was supposed to happen, like he had to do it. But I feel like there's something there. You don't need this much money for the draft. You don't need this much money for practice squad and things. It's like, is there something coming? Like, is he trying to take care of maybe Creed a little early? Is he trying to take care of maybe? Is he trying to get a little Justin Reed action going? Maybe going to give a little money there and free up some money on the front end, kind of stay ahead of this thing. Is he going to maybe Nick Bolton a little early? Like, what do you feel? Do you feel like something's coming or do you just feel like this was just part of the plan if we have $27 million, big deal? I think it'll definitely, obviously, use a cap space to do something. It could be something for the future. It could be something for the immediate future. I'm not for sure. I mean, I know we still have some left tackle uh, stuff to figure out. Um, like you said, there's some guys that we could try to go ahead and get extended. That way we don't have to worry about it next season. I don't know. There's just a lot of different things that could go on. Are there, there are still people that think that they're interested in uh, OBJ or maybe another experienced wide receiver that's on the table, I suppose. Um, Like there's just a lot of different things, man. I'm not for sure, but I I don't think he's necessarily opening up space to make a big move. I just think this was pre, this was, Right, a done just part deal. Of the plan. I, it was just part of the plan. Exactly. I think he, they knew they were going to have this much cap space. I don't think they're opening it up for something in particular. I think that that's just was part of the plan. Yeah, I hear you. But you you want to know why people's kind of off about Sneed though, and it kind of goes back to what we were saying. Like even from like like what weeks ago, you would get these people that people look. People will go on Twitter and they'll find these guys that Twitter has graced with the impressions and things and and they've got a lot of influence over these guys right right and what did they say we should trade sneed for justin jefferson how crazy you know what i'm trying to say guys like that that if you guys are watching to get people's heads if anyone out there is watching anyone that tells you that that's a legitimate thing like please don't watch it anymore they're just blowing smoke up your ass 
Like, what are we doing? But I'm telling you, that's what people like, man. It yeah, is, life, but I think life sucks so bad that they just want to get on here and be told how good the Chiefs are, dude. And, and you know what we are? We're the. It's like when you ask your oh, parents. Oh, we talked about how can, good they are. Look, but it's like if you can. It's like when you you want to stay out late, so you go to your dad and you're like, "Dad, can I stay out late?" And he's like, "Pops, nope, you better go ask your." So then they go ask your mom, and mom's a pushover. We're the pops in the situation. Like we're the bad parent, we're the bad cop, and then everybody else is the good cop that everybody feels good. They give all their money to and they love, <laughs> and then we're just the guys over here, and they're like, "I hate these guys." Like whether we're wrong right. or right, nobody cares. No, we and just I understand don't tell what they want to hear. Understand? There's a lot of people so. out there, Mike. There are a lot of people out there that they don't understand. Like they really don't, and I'm not saying that they just they're like pass more passive fans or casual fans. No, I mean they, they I might get, get it. it. Like I've seen some people in the chat be like, why change something that's working well? Well, because you have to keep evolving. If you're not, if you're not changing in the NFL, you're, you're going backwards. Um, you got to keep moving forward to, to main, to, uh, right. to sustain a dynasty. You're going to have to let some players go because they're going to earn more money that you can't afford to pay. You have to keep it like, you have to keep this thing afloat and there's a way of doing it. And it's right. not people paying are, a corner dude, $20 they, million uh, dollars a year. It, it's one of those things, man, where, Brett Veach, we see things for what they are right now. Brett Veach and this team, I bet you they, I bet you they're making moves today. They're going to make moves in the draft for two and three years down the road. It's that simple. They are so far right. in the future. If you think that we're playing checkers and chess, no, those two are playing. Andy and and, and Brett Veach are playing like freaking what? Crazy eights on the beach somewhere. What's that? Uh, you, you played Crazy Eights, you know. You're like you got a two. And then they say, "No, I don't got a two. Oh, is that? Wait, that might be old maid. Go what are you fish. You know about? what I'm talking about, bro? You go lost fish. me a long time ago. You What's that? Like go freaking fish. Yeah, but I don't know how this applies. What? Um, because that's what they're playing. What's the? What's they're the old people? Fish. The old people game that they play at like certain restaurants and stuff. Like it's not bingo, but it's something Moose weird. Moose knuckle. Moose knuckle. knuckle. What? what? What's the... <laughs> Moose knuckle, isn't that what it's called? Pea what knuckle? the hell? <laughs> Moose mo- knuckle? Well, isn't that what they Pinoche? <laughs> Pinocchio? <laughs> What's it called? Backgammon? <laughs> Man, Jeremiah, did we get this a five bomb from Jeremiah? He says, uh, empty, empty bag, bag of salt and vinegar chips. Hey, salt and vinegar chips are good though. Dude, I, I can't don't, get don't into salt, and, on vinegar the salt chips, and vinegar, Jeremiah. Man. I appreciate the five, brother. Cause sometimes I'll get a chip that don't have any salt or vinegar. And then sometimes I get, I get the pucker. I'm like, what the heck? And then you're like that for four and a half hours. They got to be more consistent on it. Like, let's go be a little more consistent. Like if you want to play moose knuckle, let's play it better. Yeah. Andy and then we're playing strip poker while everybody else is out here playing. Well, now I don't know what we're stripping down the roster here. Well, stripping down this whole entire trade just just to the bare basics, it literally is just we got nothing. We got nothing for him. He walked and went and got paid by somebody else. We tagged him. We traded him. We got something for him in return. Yeah, I mean, we we got something for him in return. You get to move up a few picks in the seventh round. Yeah, look, I'm glad they got their eye on a seventh round pick right now. A month out that they needed to go up a few, a few pinnacle. Hey, is that what you call them? I'm so glad, Steve, that they have their eyes on somebody in the seventh round right now that they know. That is not going to make it to pick 264. You've got to get to 251. And and they have to make this trade a month out. That's how much, that's how big brain he hey. is. Y'all throw I some legendaries it. in the chat for uh, Jordan Francis, Jeremiah, and P. Swizzle, Gil. Everybody's super chat so far. Appreciate you guys. Um, man, yeah, I mean. Brad, what do you want us to poll? Poll it, what, Moose Knuckle? Yeah, I think it is called P. Knuckle. <laughs> P- knuckle? Na- Pinoche? I don't know. What am I talking? You? I thought it was called like Cl- Clanko or. You remember when people used to play it? that game called Rook? What's and it I never called, understood though? how to play that. That's it was the just old a person game. It was just yeah, I know. Bocce ball. No wait, what no. is that? The one they slide? That's no, curling. I like, think right? it looks like almost like a little lottery ticket they'll have at your tables, and you pick numbers. Clinko or like, I don't Clinko. know. Yes, Matthew. Up. This will take nineteen point eight million off the cap right now. Now, look, it won't actually take 
It's only going to take off about 19 because I'll say if someone else comes into the top. 51. Somebody else will now come into the top and it's going to be a player minimum. So it's going to be like 985K, 915K, something right. like that. So they'll replace Sneed. So yeah, we'll free up about 19 million. So yeah, you're spot on. It's 19 million. And then, um, like I said, another free agent on the radar. It's possible. I mean, look, Brett Veach still has to sign. Like, like we're still like what? 10, Kino. 15 players short. That's it. Kino, isn't that what you play in the lottery? That's what I was talking about. It's not the lottery. It's like, like, I feel like it, where you pick numbers know. and it comes up like bingo. Like, I no, don't it's know. This it's this one. Camille. Camille said bridge. I no, it was bridge, Kino. Bro. It was 100% Kino is what I was talking about. Good call, Stephen Bridges. Wait. Calhoun says it's, K. Calhoun says it's not moose knuckle. It's camel toe. What's that? <laughs> what kind of game is that? Somebody explain the rules of camel toe to me. Never heard that one before. <laughs> it was 100% Keno, though. Uh, but yeah, okay, so... Uh, anyway, we could talk about this Legereus Sneed trade a million times, but the fact of the matter is, Legereus Sneed's gone. He's going he to gone. Tennessee. They're going to pay him. It looks like... I don't know if anybody's come out with any contract details yet. No. But um, the, I, I feel like his contract's going to be right at that 20 mil mark. Right, but anyway, they're paying him. He's getting paid. We got a third-round pick for next season and a seventh round swap. Um, that's the compensation. A lot of people don't like the compensation, but I, then again, I'm just going to keep telling you, would you rather have that or nothing? That or nothing. Can Brett Beach essentially, now this might be a far fetch because we like to get draft capital to move. Do you think he, he can move that third round pick in this year's draft? Like, do you think he could use that to move up a little bit if he wanted to? Like, so he just don't care that much. I, I was saying that right before you got on here. Like so literally, he while you're still waiting be able to, to do it, right? That's what I said. Like you could see some immediate compensation for it in some way, but the fact of the matter is, Brett, the, it, in real life, like in real life, a GM doesn't have the force trade button like on Madden, so he can't make people give him more than they want to give him for Sneed. Well, look, I honestly think you, Sneed's you, need well, here, was well, a little bit of a factor too. Okay, yeah. Well, there's a, a hundred different reasons why, but do you really think that Brett Beach went out there and he was like? Okay, all 32 teams, what would you give me for LeJarrius Sneed? Okay, the Titans, you guys are giving me the least. I'm taking what you're giving me. I'm going to take the least amount for him because I want to get fleeced. Do they think that's how that worked? That's, this is crazy. No, obviously the Titans like, offered you the can't most. Force, you cannot force someone to give you <laughs> right. stuff for a player. Do you think, though, here's it's where insane. I think. I don't understand, Mike. My, my brain hurt. They're were making my head in, hurt. Were we in any rush to trade Sneed? I don't think so. so no, but maybe, you didn't want to pay him this year. I know that. I get, I get it. But you still have a month. You still got five weeks till the draft. You don't think maybe his value would have climbed just a little bit between now and the draft? I mean, you just seen that guy no. from Detroit cut their corner because he's in trouble with the law. Like, what happens in two weeks if a uh, freaking one of the top quarters in the NFL play basketball and they break their wrist trying to dunk it or something? Like, they got to come calling for Sneed, right? I feel like if you would have waited a little bit, maybe the value could maybe tick up. A I bit. don't think there was that many people interested. That's well, my opinion. Maybe not. I think you had like the Colts. But the longer you Titans. wait, might somebody come, you know, become interested. The longer you wait, you might win the lottery too. But should you quit your job right now? I I would love to. Honestly, I think I'm That's I might. what I'm saying though. Actually. Like you can't you can't like how much money can you get playing predict, loose knuckle? You can't predict the future uh, on like somebody might come along and want Sneed. But if you're getting a, Steve, a why decent not? Deal, just believe right and work now, hard. Believe and work hard, Steve. It's American dream, right? It's American way. American work really hard at something and it'll work, work for you. Baby. You can be anything you want to be. You know, just work hard work. Sky. Wait, let me sing a song. <laughs> I can go twice as high. Take a look. look. It's, in, it's a in a book. It's, it's reading, reading rainbow. rainbow. I don't even know why I sang reading rainbow. It just reminded me of like an inspirational time in my life. Back when you still believe the whole, if you work hard, yeah, you can <laughs> Back do in anything. The third grade. Once <laughs> yeah. I got to the fourth grade, and I realized all that homework was still getting me C's. I said, "Screw it." <laughs> uh, hey, if you're watching, we appreciate you, man. It's after midnight here on the yeah, East maybe. Coast. Let's Hit go. that like button. Hit that like hey, button, baby. If, if, if Hit that we, we don't ever mention you, Twitter guys. We never mention the X people or the Facebook. Oh yeah, people. if you're on we X, baby. Sometimes because we get wrapped up in the YouTube crowd. But if you guys are over on X. Hey, Hey, hit the like button there. Get it out to more people over there. Leave some comments. Do what you got to do, man. 
uh, like to get more people over on that platform as well. And then, of course, Facebook. Appreciate you guys. Looks like we got a few few likes from Facebook. So, Dang, uh, Ron, L. Ron oh. L's in the chat speaking the truth right now. Let's go, Ronnie. We L, have you're no right left up. tackle. You're right, Ronnie. Oh, Minihue's out. You're freaking right, Ronnie. I don't even know how you. Oh, Minihue's going to get paid this year. If I was Brett Veach, I'd already cut him. Maybe he has to cut him after a certain day. But I'm not keeping a guy that is not going to play for like seven, eight, nine weeks and still pay him ten million against the cap. That is asinine. Okay. And then we have no depth at defensive end and running back. You're completely right about that too. I think Chiefs Kingdom's overlooking the fact that our defensive end room. It's pretty much garbage, okay? Like, we're the only team in the world that don't value pass rushers, apparently. Like, we have one serviceable one in George. He's about above average, I'll say George. Above average. He could maybe be elite. I don't know if he could actually get to elite, but... I just but used yeah, the, the other side's kind of garbage, huh? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I was using, I was trying the new emoji, the new suck it emoji and the to the pit one. I was checking it out. To the so, pit uh, and suck it. <laughs> Are you telling them to go to the pit and suck it? Like, I don't know if I like where that's going. I was just checking it out. I said it the other way around, but you know. Suck it in the pit. Which one? <laughs> I don't know if I like any of this, to be honest. This is getting really All right, weird. well, so we've talked about the sneak trade quite a bit, and I think not, nothing's changing here. Everybody's still, you're either butthurt about it or you're like, cool, we got something. Yeah, but either way, it's over, right? So <laughs> it is what it is. So like. Whether you believe the unicorns and rainbows crowds that tell you that we should have got three first round picks or you're a realist and you're like, OK, we got some compensation for a guy we were getting nothing for. Uh, so we're OK. Let's move on. Whatever. It's done. Uh, but, Mike, we, we did do our first Chiefs mock today where we tried to predict what the Chiefs might do in the draft. This is the first version of it. It, it will, like I said, it will evolve weekly. And then right before the draft, we're going to put out our final prediction. Let's go ahead and talk about that. I can only upload one picture. The others weren't working for some reason. It's got them all on there. If it's a little small, I'm sorry. But the other ones weren't working. I was just trying to get it to work, and I couldn't. So I'll just go ahead and bring this up. And let's talk about that for a little bit. We'll get some opinions on this. Um, oh, here, no. It's the the all chiefed up draft predictions 1.0. Mike, look, who is that? I who is that up there? Can we talk about this for a minute? That is a, uh, that's our boy. Okay, that's our boy from BYU. His name is uh, Suamataiu. <laughs> I knew Sua, you messed that up. Suamataiya. 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 There you go, Kingsley Suamataiya. Look, a lot yeah. of people don't know about Kingsley, but look, this is what I think. You're gonna I, know about him. You're I gonna honestly, learn. And, and look. We like to put our finger on the pulse. And, and we like to look at who the Chiefs have talked to, who the Chiefs have interviewed, this and that, everything else. Man, they can't see those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try again to get the bigger pictures uploaded. Right. Keep going. Though. But where we pick is weird. It, this draft is a nice draft. I get it. But where we pick is just kind of weird. It, it always is. 32 is always kind of weird. You're basically taking a shot in the dark. We've seen it with Felix last year, okay? It's that simple. You may get a guy that's awesome. You may get a guy that takes three years to develop. Uh, it is what it is. Would love to have a big wide receiver. Somebody told me on X, we posted this. Somebody said, well, I would take Brian Thomas Jr. right there if I could. Well, my God, I guess I would too, bro. He's a top 15 player. Thank you for your input. If he does fall that far, I'm sure they'll take him. Uh, but they're not going to. So my point is, is Kingsley here, big guy. Big guy is Kingsley. He is our number eight tackle on the on our board of tackles. He's our number, number eight, eight guy. Number and eight. So that's presumably saying we think eight tackles are going to go in the first round. And I don't know why they wouldn't. You've got Joe Alt going probably top five to ten. Troy Fatanu may be the best one there. I think he's literally a Trent Williams clone. Like everything about that kid reminds me of Trent Williams when he was coming out of Oklahoma. Uh, J.C. Latham, he's going to go top 15. J.C. Latham may be the best ready-to-go right tackle in the game. Oli Fashanu from Penn State is going to go in the first round. He's going to go in the top 15 to 20. Tyler Guyton is turning into one of those guys that is flying up draft boards because he's got so much potential out of Oklahoma. 6'8", 322. The dude is just a flat-out beast, a 34-and-a-half-inch vertical. 
Then you got a Marius Mims, the big cat from Georgia, 6'8", 340. If he had more tape, this guy's going in the top 10. He just can't stay healthy. But guess what? Somebody's going to take a chance on him. And so the Chiefs need a tackle. And look, if the Chiefs don't get one at 32, you are now going to have to take somebody in the second or the third round that may or may not work out for you. And when I say may or may not work out for you, it's going to be really uh it's going to be really hit or miss. So we had Kingsley Suamataya at number tell 8 him, out of BYU. Did you tell him a little bit about Kingsley, tell him about how he's uh I'm getting ready to. Let's go. Tell him uh, about Kingsley, tell him a little bit about this man. Kingsley is our number 8, okay? We took him over Jordan Morgan and Patrick Paul. That's that's 9 and 10 right now on our big board. Was was nine and ten was Jordan Morgan Patrick Paul. We like Suma Suma Mataya a lot better. Suma Mataya, and, and the reason why is he's six five. Suma Mataya three twenty six. Six five three twenty six, and look, he's twenty one years old. He's young. He's a red shirt sophomore coming out. He's a young guy. He runs a five second forty yard dash five point zero four. He runs by the way. A 1.74 10-yard split. He has a 28-inch vertical, 34 and one fourth inch arms, and 10, 10 inch, 5 and 8 inch, 10, 5 and 8 inch hands. So almost 11 inch hands. Like, this dude can flat out play. But the even cooler thing is, is did you guys know that his cousin is Pine Sewell from the Detroit Lions, by the way, who is freaking awesome. This is his cousin. And this kid has better draft specs. He runs faster. He jumps higher. He does everything better than Pine Sewell. And Pine Sewell is a top five tackle in this league. Nobody's talking about Sumataya, Steve. Why is that? Because he's from BYU. And nobody's radar, put any baby. hype on him yet. I think he's got a chance to sneak into the back end of the first. And And, and what I'll say is... It's a little bit of an overreach. I really think he's somewhere around that 40 to 45 mark for me on the big board. But look, we picked 32. We picked 32. And the only receiver sitting there that we would have probably considered taking was Lad McConkey. And, and me and Steve talked about that. We were like, look, is Lad McConkey even a guy that we think the Chiefs would take? Maybe, maybe not. You know, they've not been proven they'll take guys like that, to be honest. Would he be a good fit for the Chiefs? Yeah, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that... Right, that they think so. Yeah, I think he would, but again, a lot of people's also done Lad McConkey. We're trying to throw some names and players out here that maybe you guys need to learn about. And so, Sua Mataya, Pinay Sewell's cousin, you now know about 6'5, 326 out of BYU. By the way, Andy Reed's alma mater, by the way, had Puka Nakua last year on the team. Uh, maybe this is another draft still from BYU, who knows? But that's what we did, and then in round two, Steve. Till you get this up. I know they can't, can't see this. It, it's literally not letting me do it. So the only thing I could do is share my screen to Twitter, and I don't know if it'll be any bigger, but we can try it. What's, it, what's happening here? It's just not letting you upload the picture. Uh, it's uploading as a weird file, like a .h e i c or something instead of JPEG or, or PNG or anything. Okay, yes, gotcha. it won't let it upload it. So I don't feel like messing with that. Well, maybe you can get um, it on Twitter. But anyways, in the second round, Steve, what did we do? What did the Chiefs do in the second round of drafts? They trade up and take wide receivers. Yeah, they do. They trade up to take wide receivers. Uh, can you see that any better? I, I feel like it's still tiny. Maybe not. Can you zoom in the picture? No, it won't let me. I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm removing it. I got an idea. Do Talk you? to him about what we did, Steve, and I'll get this fixed for you. All right, so this is kind of weird, too, because we considered today when we were doing this that the, the Chiefs would make a trade in the second round, and it was funny because we actually discussed, we were like, do the Titans have a pick in the second? Because, you know, maybe that could be a trade for Sneed. Maybe we'd go that route. Um, but but we, we ended up doing something a little bit different, so... We did trade up. We didn't trade up very far. We found a trade partner um, with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's what we did. So we traded with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, trade compensation on that was, um, let's see here. Give me a second. We traded our pick number 64 
and our pick number 159, which is a fifth rounder, to grab the number 57 pick from Tampa Bay. And we took um, Roman Wilson, wide receiver from Michigan. Like it. Uh, so Roman Wilson, he is a lot like Lad McConkey. Um, he might not be as polished as Lad McConkey on route running, but he's pretty close. Like he's very similar, a uh, similar build. I think their uh, size, weight are pretty spot on. Uh, speed, they both ran a 4.39.40 at the combine. Uh, Roman Wilson was excellent. I think it was the senior bowl. Uh, he was almost unguardable. Roman Wilson is a, is a very good player. A lot of people are going to look at him and instantly think Sky Moore and have a meltdown. Look at you. Look at that. Look at you. They could see it, baby. There you go. Uh, Had to show his belly ring. A lot of people are going to see Sky yeah. Moore with this pick and freak out, but I think here's the, here's the difference. So Sky Moore, by all means, is a slot receiver. He needs to be used in the slot. That's why he's not doing well because they're not using him in one specific. He's a slot receiver. Roman Wilson is a little more flexible. Roman can can play different positions, uh, more than Sky Moore could coming out of uh, Mich- uh What is it? Western Michigan. Where Western he's from? Michigan, baby. Um, yeah, but I mean Roman Wilson. I mean he's a he's a national champion there with Michigan. Can I talk to you about Roman? Yeah, keep it going. Let's go. Roman at the Senior Bowl was unguardable. There was two guys at the Senior Bowl, at the recent Senior Bowl, that was untouchable. It was Roman Wilson. It was Ladd McConkey. Those two right there were untouchable. If you couldn't get Ladd McConkey in round one, Roman Wilson is an exact clone in round two, as close as you're going to find. Ladd McConkey is six foot. Roman Wilson is 5'11", so he's right there. Lad McConkey's 186. Roman Wilson's 185. Lad McConkey runs a 439 40 yard dash. Guess what? Roman Wilson runs a 439 40 yard dash. Lad McConkey runs a 10 yard split of 152. Blazing 152. Guess what? Roman Wilson runs a 152 10 yard split. Okay. Roman Wilson didn't jump at the a combine. He didn't jump. So we don't have his vert numbers. And look, his hands, they're a little small. Or his arms, rather, thirty and three eighth inches, but that's still bigger than Lad. Lad's thirty and one fourth, so he's got a little bit longer arms. Now he does have a little bit bigger hands. He's nine and three eighths, and, and I think Lad was eight and five eighths. So he's actually got big, bigger hands. He's right. got bigger hands, longer arms. He runs the same forty, the same ten. He's the same size. And he played at Michigan. So, again, I get it. Georgia plays SEC, great. But Michigan in the Big Ten is not playing crap. And this guy is a national champion. He played under hardball. He played with J.J. This dude knows what he's doing. He's right. going to so, be great. So the common sentiment is going to be a, another slot receiver or another guy that's only 5'10 or whatever. We get that. And th- this, what this exercise is is us predicting what the Chiefs will do, not necessarily like what we would like to do. Uh, but we did like an entire mock draft that led us to believe these are the people that would be available at these times. We weren't going to be able to get Xavier Leggett because we took him before the Chiefs ever picked in the first round in our mock. And where he went, you're going to hate it. Uh, we think that Xavier Leggett could end up with Baltimore or Buffalo or right. someone like that. That's um, not good. Exactly. It's not. It's not good for the Chiefs, but they're not going to. I just don't see them trading up to take a wide receiver in the first round. Just you know not what I like Rambo. about what you did here, Steve? What? You you grabbed everybody at their transfer jersey rather than the actual team they actually play for now. And I appreciate it. I did. I did on a couple. Like you got them in an Oregon uniform, not whatever. Let's move on to round three. We got Jalen Wright from Tennessee running back. Round three, pick number 95, Steve. I absolutely love Jalen Wright. To me, he is a Jarek McKinnon clone, straight Jarek McKinnon clone. And by the way, I think he's, I think he's a little shiftier. I know he's probably faster. Like I love Jalen Wright. Like to me, he's the second highest graded running back on my list. I I like everything about him, Steve. A lot of people don't think he's all that great. I've got him number two just behind Jonathan Brooks. Now, look, Jonathan Brooks is probably a clear head and shoulders. If Jonathan Brooks wouldn't have tore his ACL in November of last year, okay, he's way ahead. But now that he's tore that ACL, it's closer than you think. And to well, be Matt, honest, I've Matt got a second-round grade on him. 
I think I think he could go before this pick for sure. But for I sure. Think, I do think that the running backs are going to fall further than people think, and that's why we think that he might be here at this at this juncture. And if he is there at round three ninety five, the Chiefs could definitely. No, it's, it's just a steal at this juncture. But like I say, I do have a second round pick on him. Right, he um, is top sixty. In my opinion, right now wants to know where we had Worthy going in our mock draft. We actually had Worthy going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I can't remember exactly what pick it was, but it's a first round pick. Uh, they seem like a team they're needing to replace that Calvin Ridley role. Uh, I know he's kind of similar to Christian Kirk, sort of, but not really. Um, they could definitely reach on someone like Xavier Worthy. That's where we had him going in our mock. Right. Brent says running back in the third. What about interior or corner? Well, at the at, yeah. Well, we think corner. I mean, come on. We draft corners fifth round and beyond, and they like we do pretty well there. Plus, we're pretty loaded at corner. I don't know if you have to go third round on a corner. Um, but interior offensive line, I totally get that. But look, Jalen Wright sitting there at pick ninety five. You had to take it. Yeah, I think so. You have to take it. Look, we don't have Clyde back. We don't have Jarek McKinnon back as of now. And that's the thing about mock drafts. You've come out with a mock draft and you'll sit there and you'll slave over it. And you're, you'll do whatever and you'll cry and you're trying to figure out your pick. And then five minutes later, Brett Veach makes a move and it runs the whole thing. And it's like, okay, cool. But that's why mock drafts suck. But in this scenario, he was on the board. That would be ignorant right. not to take him. Uh, well, like Adam, he says, there's no way we take our running back in the third. Um, I don't think they would unless someone like Jalen Wright's available. I, I like it's kind of like last season. If for some reason Jameer Gibbs had fell close to our pick, I think they would have took him in a heartbeat. They might they have were even very much up. talking about that. They might have even moved up a couple spots to take that guy. I think it just depends on the value that's on the board. I think if Jalen Wright's on the board at round three ninety five, they'll take him. It doesn't matter that he's running back. It's just good value. No, otherwise, look, if he's not sitting there on the board, they do probably do something different because I wouldn't think they would Absolutely. spend no more in a seventh round pick or a UDFA on one. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But so, I mean, listen to this. We're on the same page there, Adam. Jalen oh. Wright, great lateral quickness, great vertical speed. Jalen Wright, by the way, let, let me tell you what Jalen Wright does. 5'10", 210, a 4'38", 40-yard dash, a 1'55", 10-yard split, a 38-inch vert, 31 and a half inch arms, nine and three quarter eight inch hands. Uh, guess what else? Guess what else he does? He's the best. He's the best blocker in the draft when it comes to pa pass pro. Like he is Jarek McKinnon. If you want to replace Jarek, if you want to put a weapon like this, and by the way, let's not act like freaking, uh, let's not act like Pop is the most healthy guy in the world. The dude had off season surgery yeah. last year and they didn't even tell us about it. He was nursing shoulder injuries and all kinds of injuries all year long. He runs like a raging bull. Do we not want a valuable running back like this to continue an Andy Reid offense when we need it? I gladly take this. This is a luxury pick. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing about it. Like you said, uh, haven't re-signed McKinnon or Clyde. Um, so there's definitely a need there. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to take it in the third round unless you get value like this. If there's value like that there, then yeah, you take a stab at it. Isaiah Pacheco is obviously going to be um, the bell cow in the offense more, but, but we don't really do that with people. We don't run people constantly like that. But he's going to get the majority of the carries, Mike. And, and with that, knowing that, we also know that Isaiah Pacheco has dealt with shoulder injuries. He's dealt with other things. The way this guy plays, like you never really know. Like he runs hard every play. Um, and he's had some lingering shoulder problems and things like that. You have to have a backup plan um, in place. And I think if the value's there in third round, they would do it. Otherwise, I think they wait till late or UDFA, like you said. Right. So, I mean, look, you, you took care of your tackle position. We have, what, one running back right now on the roster because you haven't got Clyde back. I mean, yeah, you got Prince and you got LaMichael P. Run, but come on, guys. Prince never – look at all the hype he had. Look at all the hype of P-Rod. They both got their shot to do something, and none of them done nothing. Yeah, of course. So, look, you can't just always be like, oh, we got Prince and P-Rod. Right. What, what, what like, are we, we doing the next on. round? So, look, in round four, we took defensive tackle, Jordan Jefferson, out of uh, LSU. Uh, by the way, Steve, the reason I, I thought this was a good pick – and I love how you went and grabbed his West Virginia jersey. Why wouldn't you do this to confuse the hell out of everyone? <laughs> I did it. Like, you made everybody look like we had no idea what West Virginia was. There, there's <laughs> going to be somebody watching this and be like, 
these idiots don't know that's a West Virginia jersey. They didn't get the right guy. They didn't even put the right picture up. Dude. Uh, anyways, love Jordan Jefferson. He was at the Senior Bowl. He was mean. He ripped a guy's helmet off. He wasn't having it. Uh, he plays with like a chip on his shoulder. I actually have him ranked right now. We got him ranked, Steve, as our 17th defensive tackle. So round four, round five. And and honestly, I believe I could probably put him up a little higher. I think he's probably better than Logan Lee. He's probably just as good or better than Tyler Davis that we have higher. Uh, I, th- I think right now, I think I could move him up higher on the board. And again, 6'3", 313. He's pretty big. He could almost play a nose at 6'3", 313. I mean, you definitely can. He can also get after the quarterback. Uh, he had a 31-inch vertical jump. This dude is 300. And 13 pounds, and he had a 31-inch vert, bro. Like, that is very good. 33 and an eighth-inch arms, 9 and 7 eighth-inch hands, almost 10-inch hands. Uh, I think he'll be a nice piece so that we don't have to keep signing one-year deals over and over again. Right, for sure. I like to pick. I mean, round four. uh, Like, yeah, could they go defensive tackle early? We actually discussed it. They could take a, some, they could take a shot on, like, a Tavondre Sweat. Um, let's see the other guy that we like, uh, Johnny Newton from Illinois, but he's a little undersized. I don't think they would take him cause he's kind of more like Kalija Jacansi. Also Michael, Michael Hall, is that his name? Uh, from Ohio state, not, not Michael C Hall from Dexter, but, but Michael Hall, Michael Hall, come on now. Um, anyway, he's also the same way, Mike, he's a little undersized. Yeah. I, just um, think, I just think Jordan Jefferson's a good pick. To bolster a defensive line, right? Because you don't really know what you have with Isaiah Bugs, and right. technically, we don't know what we have with Neil Farrell either. Right. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about this pick. I, he's a solid, solid pick, and we need help at defensive tackle position. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. Uh, in the round five, 173rd pick, we took uh, Eric All, tight end of Iowa. So a lot of people do want to hit the tight end in this draft. We've talked about how we don't know if the Chiefs will or not. Um, and I guess where we settled was if they do, it'll probably be later in the draft. Eric all, uh, this is somebody that they, they plan to meet with in a top 30 pick. Um, Eric all, I think, uh, let's see, I see what I did, Mike. I, I got his before the transfer Jersey as well. I have Eric all in his, in his Michigan stuff, uh, but he's from Iowa. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with him. Uh, Iowa has been putting out a steady, uh, supply of tight ends. I mean, we're talking George Kittle. We're talking a um, guy from last year, Sam Laporta. Uh, so, I mean, they, they've been they've been doing the Lord's work on tight ends for the NFL, Mike. So, what do you think about Eric Hall? I love Eric Hall. Right now, I, I have him as the fifth overall tight end on the board. Uh, he could be higher. He is one of the – okay, so look, everybody knows your first few tight ends is Brock Bowers and Jatavion Sanders. We get it. We get it. But look, Jatavion, a good athlete, he didn't do well at the combine. Like, he could have done a lot better. Brock Bowers, let's be honest, at 6'3", 243. Even Jatavion at 6'3", 245. These guys are H-backs almost. They're lining up in the backfield. They're lining up in line. They're lining up at wide receiver. They're lining up in the slot. This is a weird tight end class this year. Even Ben Sennett out of K-State, they are all basically glorified H-backs. Like, they really are. There's only a few. So, look, I've got Eric All rated right above Theo Johnson. Again, Theo, 6'6", 259. But, look, Theo has his limitations. I know he's a, a freak athlete in the testing. But Eric All, actually, in my opinion, has a little pop. He has a little wiggle. He has a little juice. And you don't see that from the other tight ends besides the Brock Bowers and Jatavion Sanders. So, I believe besides those two, Eric All is a guy at 6'4", 252 that gives you a little pass catching he gives you a good blocking tight end if you want to see some good blocking on eric all by the way uh go back and watch 2022 film against ohio state boy he went out there and let hassan haskins have himself a day he can win uh 50 50 balls he's got soft hands now the only problem with eric all steve is when he transferred to iowa before he transferred he hurt his back he hurt his back at michigan and he had to have some kind of back surgery but he completely healed yeah. Uh, I'm going to let you pick back up on Eric all, but uh, Jordan Schultz actually put out some contract information on Jerry Sneed. I'm going to go ahead and put that out. 
Um, he said the terms of Jerry Sneed's new contract extension with the Titans is 19 million a year over four years with $55 million guaranteed. So 55 over four years, 19 million APY. So that's right at that 20 million we had said. Right at it. Right at it. And I knew, you know, we knew, we knew we weren't going to pay it. Like, so, I mean, it is what it is. Look, he was wanting what? 22, 23 is what they were saying. So what is uh 19 million over four years? He's around what? 70 something million or something like that. 75 million, 76. I can't do math. I'm not good at math. Well, look, 20, 40, 60, 80 minus four, 76. All right. Well, I, I was right go. then. Yeah, you had it. You had it. 55 million guaranteed. Look, that's a lot of guaranteed money, man. That's a lot of guaranteed money. I think, I mean, look, I think it's a win win. If he passes his physical, I think, you know, I think the Titans got themselves a good player, obviously. And, and, uh, I mean, Brett Veach got what he could get. It's right. that simple. Let's get yeah, back, back to Eric Hall. Look, we were talking about his himself. back injury. Yeah. yeah, he hurt himself. He had that back surgery, okay? That wasn't good. But when he left Michigan, he had some really weird stuff to say about Michigan. Like somebody within that program was like advising him wrong or something and got him hurt. So that's why he alluded to. I don't know if that's true. But he went to Iowa and he immediately destroyed it at Iowa. And then he tore his ACL last year. So he's coming off a back injury and an ACL injury. That sucks. It really sucks. I understand it. But when you're round five pick 173, I might still take a chance on this cat because he does what Noah Gray does better. Like, in my opinion, he's better than Noah Gray. And so if you got a chance to upgrade it, and look, the back injury shouldn't affect the knee. The knee shouldn't affect the back. These are two separate injuries. I don't love injuries, but now with the advances in modern medicine, you know, uh, a lot of people were getting these ACLs redone and they're coming back stronger. The back showed not to be a problem beforehand. It doesn't scare me too much. Now I wouldn't take the guy in round three. Okay. That's a little early, but round five, one seventy three. I mean, come on, I'll take the shot at him. And by the way, uh, the chiefs have spoken to Eric all, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be a top 30 visit. Yeah. So that's what I was saying earlier. He, he is yeah. on the radar of Brett Veach. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good pick here, man. I mean, he does have some injury history. I get it, but again, he sh he could run block and he can show some pop in the pass game, and that's what we like. Absolutely. Uh, the value's there, too. If it's round five, uh, why not? Right. And so round seven, because we traded away, I think, our other pick in round five. We did. So round seven, uh, pick 252. We took Anthony Gold, wide receiver, Oregon State. We doubled up on wide receivers. Anthony Gold's a dog, by the way. He's from Leavenworth, Kansas. We have brought him in for a top 30, so he is on the radar. Um, will he make it here? I well, don't know. You also have to remember, Mike, I think we swapped this pick just now, too. So this is going to change next week. Right. So it's going to get higher, which means now you definitely – I still don't know if you get him, but you might get a better chance at getting him early in the seventh than late. Right. So that actually makes this pick a little more – feasible uh but look this guy's a team captain at oregon state he's from leavenworth kansas um he's a little guy but, but that's what the chiefs like man he's 5'8 174 okay they've talked to him they've talked to lad mcconkey who's 186 pounds I mean, they talk to little guys this is what they want in kansas city i don't know why but this is what they love uh he has an elite 40 time number at 439 it's elite compared to uh, the top five wide receivers of football, it's elite. He has an elite 10-yard split, 149. He has an elite tested for uh, vertical, 39.4. His arms are a little short. They're under 30-inch. His hands, 8 and 7 eighths. Uh, they're a little smaller than 9 inches of what you'd like to see, but he's a little guy. He's 5'8", 174. I don't think his hands and arms are right. going to be abnormally large. So you get what you get here. But yeah, when you compare him to like Tyreek Hill, he's one tenth of a second off his forty. He's got a faster ten yard split than Tyreek Hill, and he has a one inch less vert than Tyreek Hill. So that's it: one inch less vert and a one tenth of a second on the forty separates him from Tyreek Hill. Um, when you look at combine numbers, so right. the potential's there, and the Chiefs have reached out to him. So yeah, we like slot wide receivers. It's not going to change. Like we right. all want to see mean, the, we all want to see the big, you know, the six three, two hundred and fifty pound guy that runs, you know, we we all want the Johnny Wilsons of the world. We're not going to get him. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Rob Smith had it right here. He said, Legereus needs signing a four-year, $76 million. There you go. With the Titans per Jordan Schultz. Uh, yeah, man. So it is what it is, man. Everybody got to chill on the Sneed thing. I think, you know, it's over now. It's over and done. That's a good thing for the Chiefs going forward. At least we know what's happening. As far as the Anthony Gold pick, yeah, slot receivers galore. That's right. Uh, that's Brett Beach and Andy Reid's MO. That's what they do. And that's why that's kind of why we're leaning that way as far as our predictions go. So uh, overall, that's what we had for our first prediction. Like I said, this is going to change. It'll evolve weekly and we'll put out some final predictions right before the draft actually happens. So obviously things could switch up now. Now, now um, maybe cornerback does come into play, but I don't think it has to, but it could. And then also this pick has been swapped. So that could change things up just a little bit. Or it might not change a thing. Maybe it's just they could actually get Anthony Gold at that pick. Um, we'll have to look further into it. Uh, but out of the you know the predictions that we have so far, what's your favorite pick, Mike? Like if I, mean, I think Jalen Wright's the best value uh, if he right. could fall. But then again, we don't have to have a, a running back that high. But I mean, if he fell to third third round pick ninety five, that's tremendous value. But what's your favorite pick? Because uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of really liking this Kingsley uh Sua Mataya. Yeah. In, in round 1. I like Kingsley too. Um he's not really being talked about as a first round pick though. Like we're going to be the first people that you have ever come across that says that he is going to be a top 32 pick. I can almost bet on that one. Um will he be a top 32 pick? I don't know. I still don't think he he gets there. I don't. But the way that the draft board fell and the way you have to do mock drafts, it, you had to reach on a tackle here, right? Steve, I mean, uh, who, who was the other tackles available? It was Jordan uh, Morgan. Yeah. Which and, out of uh, Arizona that we're not too big on and Patrick Paul out of Houston. Yeah, yeah. Like Patrick Paul. But neither one of those guys, in my opinion, are worth the 32. I think most people would say Jordan Morgan is a first-round pick. But I think Kingsley's better. So if Jordan Morgan's a first-round pick coming off an ACL injury a year ago, then I think uh, Sumataya is as well. So they're the same size. Matter of fact, he's 15 pounds heavier. He's got longer arms by two inches. Right. He run a, a faster, you know, the same 40, 5.04. And by the way, I was telling Steve this today, and it, it's kind of strange, but I've been doing a lot of research on tackles and how 40-yard times – dictate how good they're going to be in the league and you know what's funny a 40 yard you would think 10 yard sprints are would be better to dictate how good a tackle is nay nay 40 yards 40 yard dashes actually correlate to better like the faster 40 correlates to the better tackle more often than the faster 40 for the wide receiver isn't that crazy it's insane like you wouldn't think it but yeah i really yeah. like sumataya pick and being panay Sewell's uh cousin does that mean anything? No, not really. But at the same time, that's somebody he can now call up and he can help him walk him through the draft process. He's in the league. They come from a good family. They don't cause problems. Uh, they're they're big time family oriented. They go to BYU, which is Andy Reid's alma mater. Uh, they play pretty good competition. I think he's ready to come in. And would he be better day one than you know Wanye? I don't know. But I think that makes good, healthy competition, though, right? And and by the way, yeah. if he can't play left tackle, for sure, we may we may need some guards. He could kick down an interior lineman easily. So, right, I think it covers a lot of bases there. I right. really like the pick. So we'll probably do a video uh, or another live stream, something like that, and go over more draft stuff coming heavily. So, uh, yeah, let's get back to what we're here for tonight, real quick, before we get off for the day. Well, we're here because Legarius Sneed was traded to the Tennessee Titans for a future third round pick and a seventh round pick swap, Mike. Uh, a lot of people still just, they can't get over it. Um, if you look through the chat, there's still people talking about it. Uh, Laugh for Life Entertainment says these guys downplayed Sneed's importance tonight. If saying that it was obvious the Chiefs needed to tag and trade him and get some compensation as opposed to letting him walk, See, because the Chiefs were never going to pay Legere Sneed, then yeah, we downplayed his importance. It's people like Laugh for Life <laughs> Entertainment that make this like the most tedious, worst thing I've ever decided to do in my life. Right. Um, 
Greg Berg, he says the Colts won the Snead trade because the Chiefs lost him and the Titans had to pay him. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Chiefs at 15. He says joining on all platforms. LOL. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Um, yeah, man. I, I think the overall sentiment is people just freaking out about the compensation. And, and once again, I can only say it so many times, but we weren't going to pay Sneed. We were never going to pay Sneed. We tagged him so we could trade him for some sort of compensation instead of letting him walk for nothing. So the the card was, was planned and played by Brett Veach uh, to the extent that he could do it. No one can force teams to trade higher picks for Sneed. It just wasn't the market. Um, you don't have the force trade button like on Madden in real life. And sometimes you just take what you can get. And I think that was the best offer they were given. And and Brett Veach had a plan in place and he followed through with it. So that's that, man. I don't think there's a whole lot more to say about it. No, I mean, it had to happen. This was part of the plan. You know, it, it was don't tag Sneed, don't trade Sneed, and Sneed walks during free AC because we wasn't going to offer him anything. Look, if Sneed right. wanted to be the highest paid and he wanted 22 and 23 and then he eventually settles on, what, 19 per year? We wasn't paying that. So we would have got zilch. Right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, did you get fleeced? Yeah, but no, because now you just got an yeah, extra third I mean, round pick next year. And is you it get really, pick earlier is it really so. getting fleeced when you knew that's what you were going to do? Right. I you mean, know, it feels like you got fleeced, but at the same time, like we said over and over, you do, you are not looking at this as a, I have to get Sneed's value. That's not what you were doing. That it's just, I want something for Sneed. Right. That was never the point. Right. Uh, exactly. Adam, Adam with the two bomb, he says, what could we get uh clowny for? What's his market? Um, I'm not for sure off the top of my head, Mike, if you want to look on uh spot rack real quick. Right. Uh, check that out. I'll tell you what, though, I'm not super huge on Clowney. I mean, he can do things, but I mean, he's always just kind of underperformed, right? Yeah, well, for what he's always paid. <laughs> I I feel like he could definitely do a, a thing or two for the Chiefs. He's 31 sure. years old. They say his average annual is about 7.2. It's not terrible. It's not um, horrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be super opposed to it. My house is burning down. I that, wouldn't be super opposed to it. But uh, do you hear the alarm going on? I thought it was mine. No. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be super opposed to it, but I'm not also going to like beat down the door to grab them either. Like, I, I could see us signing back uh, Mike Dan on another one-year prove it for about $7 million if he don't get what he gets. Because I don't think Dan is worth fifteen million. Uh, no, I think that's I'm a sorry. stretch. That's, that's crazy. Rack. Yeah, that, that's pretty wild. Uh, appreciate the two, Adam. We got Flapjack in the house. What's up, Flapjack? He uh, has a two bomb and says we're taking that third and moving up in the draft. One hundred percent good. Um, that's what I was saying, Flapjack. You could see some sort of compensation for Sneed this season by using that pick to move up in this draft. So that's definitely on the table. We all know that the reason why Brett Veach likes to get draft compensation is because he likes to move up and down the boards. That's how he works the draft and gets the players that he wants. Um, so it's definitely on the table. I appreciate it too, Flapjack. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Uh, we got a five bomb from Casey Mo. Casey He Moe. says, as long as Dave Merritt is here, I have no worries. Sneed was, the bubble, was on the bubble two years ago. The room is stacked. We'll be good. Casey, thank you. Let's oh go. God, somebody's paying attention out here. Man, man Casey Mo, tell me in the chat, but is Josh Williams probably not the next one on this long list of guys that they keep? I heard you say that, Steve, Josh Williams. And I think that you, you're you on to something there because Josh Williams has, he don't have super good straight line speed, but neither does Sneed in a way. You know what I mean? They're very, like, they're very similar. They're similar. They're physical. They'll get in your face. They got short-term memory loss, which is good for a quarter. You give up a big play, you got to deal with it. But look, he's physical. He's long. He can knock the ball down if he gets beat. You know, so he doesn't have great long term speed, but he's got long, long arms and big old long fingers, man. He's going to tip it. We've seen this firsthand. Uh, right. I think he's going to be fine. And then again, you've still got Nick Jones. You've still got Naze Johnson. We're going to be fine. And it would not surprise me. Uh, by the way, we still have a guy under cap right now in our top 51 that we're not even talking about. 
Kelvin Joseph. We picked him up from the Cowboys that played at UK. He's under contract, and he's getting paid over a million dollars. He's more than the league minimum right now, which means Kelvin Joseph's got a real shot of making the team, at least getting through camp and giving himself a look. So you've still got that on the back burner. I just think uh, everybody's just a little short-sighted. But Casey Bell, appreciate that, man, because you're right. Dave Barrett deserves some credit developing these kids, and he's done a good job. Yeah, I love it. I love it because that's, that's exactly where my head's at too, Casey Mill. Appreciate the five, my man. Yeah, for sure. Or Appreciate you. Maybe maybe it's not a man. We don't know. I think it might be. What kind of a know. what kind of a lady would put a picture of a cartoon man? Is that John Cena? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what if, I'm just joking. Man, John Cena. Casey Mo, I was right. I need to. Have y'all watched the new John Cena movie? Oh, Ricky Sinicki Ricky on, Amazon on Amazon Prime. On Y'all be, do yourselves a you favor remember, and go watch that bad you Remember boy. when everybody said, man, we got to get Amazon Oh, that's Prime. actually, Mike, that's actually Casey Mo there. Nice. Sweet. I thought it was just a random cartoon, but that's awesome. I hope you like John Cena because that I kind of looks like John a tattoo Cena. artist or something. Are you like a tattoo um, artist or something? Like it would look like that vibe. But yeah, everybody was like, man, I had to get the Dolphins game on, you know, Amazon Prime. This sucks. But look, they rewarded you with Ricky Stanicki. Go watch that movie. It's hilarious. So good. So good. Like, it's worth Another uh, two bomb from Flapjack. He says, so what free agent out there we might go for now? If they go after a free agent, Mike, what are you thinking? Um, what about Makai Becton? Do you think they look at him for left tackle help? Man, I don't like Makai Becton. I'll tell you why. Out of Louisville, like he played right up the road from us, and he was a force. But when he was given that top 10 draft pick money, he just did not develop. He didn't take football serious. He let his body get out of shape. He doesn't have great footwork. He looks to be super athletic, but he just don't do well. He He's tied for the most penalties in all of football. We don't need another one of those on the left side. It, it, well, I, I mean, people know the struggles he's had, Mike. But do you Yeah, think, lots of struggles. Do you think that's something that Andy Heck, uh, where he could get the, something out of him? Because it, it's classic Brett Beach to take a, a, a high draft pick that didn't develop correctly and see if they can get it out of him. He does it all the time. It's possible, but what's he going to want? That, that's the thing. Like, yes, I would love to take a shot on him for maybe two, three million dollars, league it's, minimum. It's even. He's not going to do yeah. that. He's not going to do it. But look, coming out in the in the uh, combine, he was a monster in the combine when he come out. I want to say he was in the 99th percentile on some crap. They they said he was going to be a year one starter. He's 6'7", 364. The dude's got 36-inch arms. Like, he should have been a complete monster at the position. And he just will not dedicate himself to football. Got he a won't five do bomb it. from Blake the Snake, yeah, baby. Appreciate you, Blake. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, yeah. Stop stop writing about Makai. I, I want to see who's out there right now. <laughs> There's not a whole lot going on, man. Uh, and as far as free agency goes, um, a lot of people, I've seen people put it in the chat. I think Gary Holland asked earlier, do you think the Chiefs would take a flyer on OBJ if it was cheap enough just to have like a proven guy for a year? I would say yes. But again, we're starting to get to that point to where it's like, how many wide receivers can we roster up? Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Like, yeah, because you, this is too deep of a draft to not take a shot at a wide receiver. And even in our mock, we took a shot at two because you never know. You know what I'm saying? And then you've right. got Nico coming off the practice squad. I just don't know how many you can do because I really feasibly do not think they're going to get rid of Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony as bad as everybody wants it to happen. I just don't see it happening, man. Right, right, right. Uh, real quick, uh, since it's a, it's a Sneed night, um, one sentiment we haven't talked about yet that I've seen in a chat a few times, Mike, is no more three peat because what? Sneed's gone. What what would what, what could someone possibly be thinking in their head that they think that Sneed was the deciding factor of us three peating? I mean, he had a good play against the Ravens, but well, by I no understand means, that. that was last no year. Means, though, if the forward. Ravens got in the end zone, we just automatically lost that game. Nah. I'm talking about going forward. Like, we won already. It doesn't matter what he did last year. Right. But, but like, I'm just saying, like, I don't... What, what could be in their head where they think that he's the X factor 
of the Chiefs. I don't know, man. Next year. I, what I've learned from doing this is that Chiefs Kingdom has been bigger on Legarius Sneed. I almost think that most of them would be more upset to trade Sneed than they would trade Patrick Mahomes. The way they act, yeah. Like I've got it's this insane. weird sentiment. Like there is yeah. a real, there's a real like Chiefs Kingdom. This is like them getting hung up on their ex, man. You know, like one of those people just won't let their ex go. I feel like Sneed's going to be the next yeah. guy in three years. They're going to be like, can well, we bring Sneed back on a one year? Dude, this is something I said. Uh, I went on the the spoken with Lance Swidwell and Trevor Trudeau. Hey, I'm going to be there tomorrow. By the way, are you? Okay, cool, perfect segue. But Mike's going to be on the spoken tomorrow, so everybody should yeah. watch it. It'll be at what time? I think I'm going to be on there at 11 a.m. Eastern or 12 a.m. Let, let me check, make sure. I Not 12 a.m. It'd be 12. I mean 12 p.m. My bad. Um. Anyway, I was on there, Mike, and and we were talking about the Jerry Sneed situation. And I said that I've noticed that the same thing you just said, people are very, very attached to Sneed. And I said that Chiefs Kingdom has a like a history of always getting attached to the wrong players. Like if you're really going to get attached to a player on the Chiefs, why would you ever pick a corner? Yeah, don't get attached to a corner, this, man. VJ paying that. From history, we do not pay corners. We knew when Legarius Sneed's rookie contract was up, it was bye bye Legarius. We're not paying you that much money. You're a corner. We thought maybe so, if he didn't play up the standards this year, he could have been traded. Early. 100%. But he had the, the year of his life, and he's getting he paid for year. it because of that, and that's fine. But we knew we weren't going to pay him. But I said they, they always get attached to the wrong players. Like if you're going to get attached to somebody to where you just absolutely can't handle it unless if they get traded, you better start getting attached to Patrick Mahomes. You better get attached to Travis Kelsey for the last few years. He's with the Chiefs. Get attached to Chris Jones. Don't be getting attached to random corners. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Get attached that's like, to uh That's like getting attached to Tommy Townsend and being like, you know what? We can't go on without Tommy Townsend now. We're never going to three-peat without him. Steve, we're not like, going to three-peat without Townsend, what? man. What? It, it's crazy. McDuffie's an absolute monster. Like, like, could McDuffie change the narrative later? Uh, but I think possibly... McDuffie could be the first one that they pay. He was also the first one they drafted early. They traded up to get him. So they obviously like the guy. And he's performing at a high level already. But with McDuffie, don't you think that that could be like an early extension before he gets to the end of his contract? McDuffie might break the mold. It's possible. He, he, may, he may do it. Uh, but I don't know, man. I don't, I, it's not downplaying Snead at all. Like I get Snead was great. He shut down a lot of good wide receivers this year. He allowed us to do a lot of things, but every good thing must come to an end. Like we cannot just pay. We you just cannot keep paying every single person. Like if the chiefs keep developing every player, at every position, that's what a salary cap's here for. Like we can't do right. it. You yep. have to just go on with it. Yeah. Chief Kelsey, what's up, my man? He says Chiefs added Hollywood but lost Snead. How have they got better? Um, okay, I guess that's up for debate, right? So, in my opinion, I still think that the Chiefs are are better, are getting better. Um, and my explanation is the biggest sore spot on our team last year was pass catching, receivers, our offense. Our offense struggled so bad that it, it, they wore our defense out a million times. Uh, they made the, the the season hard on our defense. Thank God our defense was as good as they were and were able to hang on uh, to a lot of those games. But that was the sore spot. That's one thing we absolutely had to address. Uh, and they did. And I think Hollywood's a good, a good addition. I think he fits right in with the Andy Reid offense. As far as losing Sneed, that's a bit of a hit. But we also... We were prepared for it. We knew we weren't keeping Sneed. That's why we drafted McDuffie. That's why we drafted Joshua Williams. That's why I, I just feel like that. I don't think our defense is going to take as big of a hit as people think, but I'll tell you what, Mike, next season, when it comes around every time a corner, no matter who it is, if they let up a touchdown, it's going to be like, see, we should have kept Sneed. Yeah. Right. But, but like, that's the thing about it. It's going to happen. People are going to let, but I don't think the defense is going to take that big of a hit. I think the main thing with the defense was to make sure we kept Chris Jones there. Uh, our corners will be fine. So, so yeah, I do think that we, that we've got better, uh, even, even with losing Sneed. 
And I think it opens us up to continue to improve on it as well. I think the defense is going to be just fine, though. Well, look, in my opinion, if you see drop off at corner, I don't know how much that's going to be Sneed to Josh Williams or how much it's going to be that, hey, we don't have Mike Dana, Charles O'Minihue. Like, you have Felix, who's not right. really creating a lot of pressure. Now, could he turn it around? Possibly. And I know we missed O'Minihue for six games last year. I get that, too. But I think the pass rush is where they got to start focusing, in my opinion. If you think you got a little worse yeah. on the back end, and yeah, I, you did get a little worse. You got a little worse with Snead going to Josh Williams. In two years, it may turn it around. I mean, you never know. In two years, you could be looking at the same situation with Josh Williams. You really could. He's got all the talent in the world. But I think in the meantime, we've got to start getting more creative at putting pressure on the QB. This is not a time to make our defensive line get a little thinner, in my opinion. And people are – look, Chiefs Kingdom's overlooking defensive end drastically. In my opinion, defensive end and even defensive tackle, we can stand to get a little better here. I love Turk. I love Naughty. You know, but at the end of the day, they're not like game changing, you know, go get the quarterback game records. They're just not. Right. So I would love to upgrade the defensive line across the board and get two better, more high quality, more down players to go with Chris Jones. And, but I feel like what they're going to do, the, the way they're looking this year, they may just put Chris Jones rushing from a seven tech on the outside over and over again on opposite of uh, George Karloftis and just not go get a defensive end if Felix is going to do it. I just think I think defensive end is just getting overlooked big time in KC right now. I don't know yeah. what the deal is, but I think it's getting I think, overlooked. I think they'll address it. We even talked about that in our mock. Like maybe they could look at Darius Robinson to be in honest, the first round, something like that. Yeah, to be honest, but, the free agents just, in my opinion, aren't there. Right. Uh, a team real estate, a team of real estate. Sorry, says, Are you smoking? Sneed didn't give up a touchdown until the playoffs. Nobody's going to replace Sneed. Uh, Sneed did have a good year last year. Um, Sneed also two years ago let up more catches than any corner in the entire NFL. Uh, Sneed's not going to he continue did that two years in a row, by the way. Right, two years in a row. Uh, Sneed was also, uh, the highest in penalties for a defender. Uh, Sneed was also the t the team leader in missed tackles for a couple of years. Uh, Sneed was really good last year. He had a very good year, but Sneed's not what you guys are making him out to be. Um, Sneed's a very good corner. I think he's he's turned out to be really, really good. Last year was amazing. Just like you mentioned, he didn't let up a touchdown to the playoffs. How long is he going to sustain that? How much you got to pay for that? There's lots of things going in there. Um, was it Sneed? Was it a product of the system he was in? Uh, do we develop corners well, Mike, or is our system just set up to where corners excel because we have someone like Chris Jones inside, not allowing the quarterback any time? Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can look at this. Uh, but I think a way, uh, I think it, being as small minded as to think, well, Sneed had a really good year last year. He didn't let up a touchdown. So, so we're stupid for letting him go. I just feel like that's like a small way of Look, thinking. Like Snead, that's, that's, it's too narrow. I, I still think people are just, I, I think people are just not really, for one, people don't watch the game from an aerial view. They don't watch an all 22 version. You watch what you see on TV. So when Steed makes one or two good plays throughout a game, that's what you focus on, right? But nobody's watching the all 22, all 50 defensive snaps and watching Snead and seeing if he's blowing assignments and the quarterback just missed it. Did he get beat on a route and the quarterback just didn't see it? Did he get beat on a route and the quarterback made a bad throw? You know what I'm trying to say? There's several things. So if you actually go back and look, and I went back and looked through all 22, and I watched some Legereus Snead field, and I said, how dominant was he? Go back and watch him against the Jets. He did not have a great game. In my opinion, he didn't have a good game. I didn't think he played well against Denver in week eight. I don't think he played well against Miami in week nine, to be honest. I do remember beating up Tyreek Hill a few times, but that's what we're remembering as a whole. I don't think he did too well. Lo and behold, I know he didn't do good on the Vegas game on Christmas. He had a pretty crappy game, in my opinion. 
he had a pretty crappy game. So I wrote all this down and I said, I want to go look at stats and see if this is right or if this is wrong. Is my eyes deceiving me? And lo and behold, PFS coverage grade for Legere Steed against the Jet Steve is what? 45. So I was not wrong. He did not have a great game. His coverage grade against the Denver Broncos in week eight, a 41. That's horrible. That's an F minus. His coverage grade against Miami was a 47 F minus. His coverage grade against the Vegas, against Vegas on Christmas was a 50. Okay. A 50. So that's four games that I noticed that he was not as dominant as we think he was. It was just bad QB play and all other things. And I'm not trying to take nothing away from Sneed. But the point is, if you go back and look, he's not the dominant thing like he's not the generational talent that he's not trying to make superman right like yeah that's what i'm saying like very very human. good corner very good corner he was the best cover corner in football last year he did a lot of good things but i'm just saying like people are getting right. a little crazy get a little crazy and by the way he had 17 penalties this year yeah I mean, it's crazy. He had four penalties in one game against Denver in week eight. That's what I'm saying. That was the game I was talking about. I was like, can Steve get any more penalties today? He had four. And he got graded a 41 by PFF. And I know you're going to say, oh, well, PFF. Everybody loves PFF when it helps them do something good. And then when it shows something bad, nobody likes it all of a sudden. But again, I'm just saying, watch the game from a different perspective. And you'll see that Sneed wasn't like... Dude, if Steen was that good, people would have been knocking the door down to give him a second or a first pick. It's that simple. Well, that, and there's just not the market for it right now. I just don't think... Steen's best game was against Buffalo. If you went back and watched all 22... If you want to go watch Steen in his finest, go watch week 14 versus Buffalo. He was shut down. A close second yeah. would have been New England, week 15. So week 14, mm-hmm. week 15, he was just all over it, in my opinion. But there was about four, five, six weeks where he did not look like the world beater we make him out to be. And, and I'm not taking nothing away from Snead. Yeah, we're saying that. He was still the best corner perfect. last year. Yeah, he's well, still a good corner. Either it's way, it doesn't matter. Like, he could have been the best corner in the history of football last year, but the fact of the matter is the Chiefs weren't going to pay him. They just weren't going to pay a corner that much. The team's not set up that way. We have right. plenty of cornerbacks. That was the plan. They were going to tag him and trade him, get something for him instead of letting him walk. It's exactly what they did. I don't think we need to talk that much more about it, to be quite honest. Flapjack with the five bombs. Yeah, I mean, we traded Hill. We traded Hill and won the Super Bowl. We'll be fine without Sneed. Dude wasn't a world beater. Thank we you. had lone coverage in the Super Bowl, and Jones saved us. 100 percent That's what I'm trying to say. Like it's I'm glad you said it, Flapjack, because like you said this as I was saying it. Like he's not the world beater they're making him out to be. Like if you actually go watch the film and you watch every single route ran. Sneed was not like this, like ultimate shutdown kind of guy. Like there was times he was beat several plays and the quarterback would just miss it. Or better yet, like you said, Chris Jones and our defense would get to the quarterback before he could make the play. You know what uh, Sneed was really good at last year? Sneed was really good at bu- bullying receivers, getting in their head. That's why. Yes, beating them mentally, hitting them off the line. Like Sneed's really good. Don't get me wrong. Like we're not trying to say that, but uh, no, like, not by any means. But man, like th- there's just no corner out there. Like Darrell Revis in his prime, the Chiefs were not going to pay him. Like it's just right. it's not going to happen. I uh, appreciate the five flap, Jack. Um, but yeah, man, I think that's going to pretty much do it for the night, man. Uh, we've got about a, a good two hours in here talking about the Sneed trade and some draft stuff. We'll be back with lots more draft stuff. The Sneed trade. Uh, There's so much to talk about, but, uh, oh, no, we missed something here. Hold on. What did we do? This one? Oh, yeah, we did. He said, if you get rid of Tony or Moore, you ruin them forever. Keep them on and let them learn. LT should be a vet with Wanya continuing to develop. Yeah, that was back when we were talking about Tony and Moore. Right. This, Appreciate the five, by the way. And sorry we missed this. Casey um, Mo, Steve's got his finger on the pulse. I feel yeah. like he watches all chiefed up. I feel like he has, you know, you know, I like, feel like he might thing. be smarter than all chiefed up. Actually. Well, that's the thing about it, Mike. I don't think like, I don't consider us really smart or we know everything. I just no. think we think about common sense things that most people should. Again, but I'm like, just going to say like, it more simply, Steve. I don't, I don't understand why that's a hot we take. We don't coddle to the obvious opinion that gets the clicks. 
I guess. We just tell the truth. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, people don't want to hear yeah. it. Casey Mo, appreciate the five. Sorry yeah, we dude. missed that, my man. No, look, he's right about, Steve, he's right about Kadarius, Tony, and Sky Moore. I don't think the Chiefs cut him. Why would you? There's too much talent there. Hey, everybody throw some legendaries in the chat for Casey Mo. Yep. It's sorry we missed that super And chat, Flapjack bro. and Blake the Snake. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, man. Um, but no, he's exactly right. As far as the uh, receivers go, I, anyone that thinks you're just going to up and cut, uh, like, Sky Moore, uh, you're just wrong. They're not going to do that to a second round draft pick after two years. Um, hey, but if they did, Steve, I probably wouldn't be that surprised. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised if they cut Tony. Yeah, I think I feel like Tony's more of a nuisance off the field than right. Sky Moore. At least Sky Moore, like um, he might suck. But a then little, again, but at least he ain't like causing problems. Like he said, man, the contracts that they're on and the ceiling they have, it would just be silly, almost. Like you, you just you just go with it, dude. I honestly think both of them could be better if they just let them play the slot. Either one of them, just pick one, yeah. let them play the slot. I think you're fine. Well, I think that the receivers that we were able to get, as far as Rasheed Rice in the draft last year, and now having Hollywood Brown, I do think that could help both of them, uh, letting them play in a position that they feel comfortable in. Still, don't think Tony was as bad. I feel like he just kind of got the yips, man. <laughs> he really just got the yips, didn't he? Yeah, Chief Kelsey says, I'm still going with a Sneed trade as a D minus. Uh, Hell, man, make it an F, man. Yeah, might as well. well that's the thing. I, like, I guess it just depends on how you're looking at it. Like, to me, I can't give it a D minus because it's exactly what I thought we were going to do. It's it's literally the compensation. It might be a little bit less than I thought. I thought we might be able to squeeze a second out of somebody. But just so happens that anyone with a second to give up didn't care about having Sneed or paying him that much money. The team that was willing to play ball that's what they had, you know. Steve, what were we talking about that today? Because you were like, we were actually going to put this sneed trade in our dr- first mock. I brought this. I brought this up, yeah. But we didn't because we were like, well, would Brett Veach really take a third that round next year? Because they don't have one this year, and we got our answer. He took it. Yeah. So it, it's pretty crazy, man. Like I honestly didn't know if he would because I thought this ra- I thought this draft uh, was deep enough that you keep wanting to accumulate picks. But the more I think about it, you know what this draft feels like, Steve, to me? It feels like a lot of, like, fifth and sixth-year seniors that lost years due to COVID. So after you get through your big, like, first top 75 to 100, I feel like you just got a lot of serviceable fifth-year, sixth-year senior guys. I haven't and looked Brent at Beach it that much. Like pretty funny. don't like older picks, so yeah. maybe yeah, you Ch- don't need more picks this year. Chief Kelsey, we know the third's next year. We know. Um, yeah. Man, that's crazy. Uh, Casey Mo also, again, has his finger on the pulse here. Moore should be in the slot, 110%. If they would use Sky Moore strictly in the slot, Sky Moore could change a lot of minds about what people think. Um, Steve, there was games last year. There were games, and I can't remember which one, but we were like, would you all please put Sky Moore in the slot and get him the ball early and often? Yeah, literally. Force him the ball behind the line if you have to. That's all you got to do. In space and let him create. And they did that on about three to four different plays throughout the season. In all plays, he made something happen. It, it was so strange to watch that if you use Sky Moore, by the way, that's what Sky Moore done in college. So why did you like those qualities in college and then put them in the NFL and go completely away from them? Makes right. no sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. Like, I don't know. Andy was smoking some good stuff last year, apparently. Like, I don't know what they were yeah. scheming for Sky Moore, but 100%, it man, wasn't that's the only, working. That's the only way Sky Moore is going to work in this offense. I don't think he's versatile enough to do what they're trying to do with yeah. him. I think if they're going to make him work, he's going to have to be in the slot. If not, he can move on somewhere else that will use him in the slot and do okay. That's just the way I see his career going forward. Uh, K. Wayne in the house. What's up, K. Wayne? He said the Snead trade was worse than the player's grade for uh, Hunt. F Clark. minus. F, F minus I minus. K Wayne, uh, just opinion real quick. Um, is is it really an F F minus? Is it really that bad of a trade if you weren't expecting too much? Like if you knew the Chiefs were just tagging him and trading him to get some sort of draft compensation instead of letting him walk for nothing. Like, is it really that bad? Like, I can't give it like a good grade because I feel like if things would have fell. A, bit, a little bit better into place, we would have been able to get maybe a second rounder for Sneed, and maybe it wouldn't have had to have been next year. But it just so happened that the teams that had that available weren't interested. So this can was I, like, can can you can you talk this in, in reasonable like things? Okay, so look, 
I, I've got this Prime, and it's awesome. I love it. Oh God, it, like, here I we go. I love Prime. Diet Mountain Dew. No, is Steve, better than Prime. You now. don't have Diet Mountain Dew. Let's just say I'm like, dude, you're thirsty. I'll give this to you, okay? But then, but then, somebody over in the corner says, dude, don't give that away, please. I would love that Prime. I'll give you like 25 cents and a and a beef jerky stick. Yeah, that's not worth the Prime, but that's better than me giving it to Steve for free, right? That that's the kind of the deal here. Like we were going to lose like, Steve for nothing. Look, man, I can't believe you just did I that. I love everybody. Prime. Can you can you guys believe Mike just literally wrote everything out in crayon for people? I have to. It what feels are you like. doing? No, they get it. I just don't think they. I don't know. I, maybe they don't. You said they get it. They just don't. They don't want. They don't want to get it. Maybe they I don't. Think that might be it. There's no way. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, <laughs> at this point, it really don't matter. Like, I don't care what we got for Snead. It's over. I'm Like, we can't time machine it. Let me go call Marty McFly and see if we can get this. Well, redone. my point was that Brett Veach, obviously it was in his plan. And, Veach the um, Peach. This was his plan the whole time was to tag and trade. Hey, every time you write Brett Veach in a chat, does it always change it to Beach and it really pisses you off? Brett Beach. I see it in our chat quite a bit where people just in a it hurry. Constantly it constantly yeah. changes it to Brett Beach. I hate that. Right. It, it irritates me to death, man. I just have yeah, to get Mike, that off but, my chest. But like, like I was saying earlier, though, you know, it's not like Veach was looking for a bad, like, low compensation for Sneed. It's just that he, he took the best he could get. That's just what people were offering because along with trading for Snead, they had to turn around and pay this guy $76 million, 55 million guaranteed. Whew. Boys, I don't know if Snead's worth 80 million bucks. He's not. There's not a corner out there especially, that I would want to pay that much. Especially with that knee. Dude, we may look back in two years and be like, we fleeced the Titans, guys. <laughs> there's a there's a I chance don't know, of that. but there's a small chance. I, I, I know people don't want to hear that, but I think keep your maybe, heads up on that one there. Maybe. I don't know. I'm ready to get off here, Steve. I'm tired. I've been driving all night. You know what? We're going to be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. We'll do a tailgate, baby. Yeah, for is sure. Tomorrow's we'll Saturday? Am I even the right day? It is. Uh, we'll okay. be back. We'll be back tomorrow night with a live stream. Y'all keep your eyes peeled. Not sure exactly what time yet, but it'll be tomorrow night, uh, probably around 8, 9, 10, something like that. And if like I get that. so tired that I can't get on here and do it, then we just won't have a live stream. I'm so sleepy. I'm so sleepy. I can't do it now, but we'll be back. Appreciate you guys for being here and hanging out tonight with the Snead news. Uh, Whether you're sad about it or you're not, whatever, have a good night. It'll be fine. I promise. Uh, Like you always tell us in Veach, we trust. Um, So, so trust, trust Veach. Just trust him. Steve, we got fleeced, baby. Got fleeced. Hey, appreciate all the guys (laughs) that uh, sent super chats. Uh, I was Casey Moe, Flapjack, Blake the Snake. Um, we got Adam, Jordan Francis, P. Swizzle, our boy Jeremiah, our boy Gil. Um, also had, uh, I think I said Adam already, and then uh, Enrique. Uh, appreciate all you guys, and then you guys that have been members, we appreciate you as well. Uh, if you don't care, hit the like button for us on your way out tonight. And also, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, what the hell are you waiting for? Oh Do your boys gosh. a favor. And hit the subscribe button, too. Hang out with us more often. We're going to talk much, a bunch of Chiefs. We're getting ready to get in the full swing on the draft. So definitely want to hit that sub button and stick around. Appreciate you guys. Mike, I'm out. Have a good night. I'm out. Go Chiefs. I, 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 I